Manhattan Community Board 6 Environment and Parks Committee. My name is Kevin O'Keefe and I serve as chair of this committee. This meeting is called to order at 7.02 p.m. Tonight we are joined by Assistant District Manager Brendan Berth. Members of the public, you can raise any questions or comments that you have through the Q&A feature on Zoom. If there is time following the committee's discussion, we will field questions from the public. Jeannie D'Onofrio, is, is, are you on board? This is our vice chair. Uh, I believe she, if she's not on, she will be shortly in. I am here. Ah, hey, Jeannie. Hello, uh, good evening. Good evening, just an introduction to let people know that you're going to be sorting through any public questions or comments and bringing them to the surface if I happen to miss them during my scrolling. Fair enough. Fair enough, and hopefully my dog will not be barking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, uh, Raj Nayar has volunteered to take minutes for this uh, meeting. Thank you, Raj. Uh, we will now take attendance by roll call, and the aforementioned Brendan Berth will conduct that roll call now. Okay. Committee members, I will call your name and you will unmute yourselves. When your name is called, please say present. I will announce if there is quorum. Marty Barrett. Present. Matt Bondi. Okay. Doesn't look like Matt is here. Uh, Claire Brennan. Doesn't look like Claire is here either. Jean, Jeannie D'Onofrio. Here, present. Paige Judge. Doesn't look like Paige is here yet. Uh, Anton Molnar. Present. Raj Nayar. Present. Kevin O'Keefe. Present. Gary Papush. Gary here. Reshma Patel. Here. Dean said he won't be here tonight. And Mark Thompson. Over here. Okay. So we have quorum. Yay. My favorite phrase. Uh, can I just ask if you could unmute my senior project officer, Nicholas Cohn Thompson? Okay, and we'll again, we'll be starting that agenda item a little bit down the road. Uh, okay. That's fine. We'll make sure by that time we will have those microphones open. Thank you very much. Now, the agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board often and is reflected on the screen before you. If there is no objection, we will adopt this agenda. Members of the committee, if you do object to adopting this agenda, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Do not see any. Seeing no objections, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. Now the minutes from the previous meeting were distributed ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we'll adopt the minutes as drafted. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting said minutes, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the minutes from that previous monthly meeting are adopted. They will soon be available on the CB6 website. Uh, I just wanna take a little time out of here to, to send a thank you to Reshma Patel. Let me also take this opportunity to report that uh, I recognize that she has done uh, repeated minutes now in a very short time. Although she has been happy to handle this, I call on all committee members to please, um, if you have not taken minutes this year, let uh, Brendan know when you can take minutes for future meetings. Again, thank you, Reshma, for once again coming to bat for this committee. Appreciate it. Uh, in order to conduct an efficient meeting, let's observe a few ground rules. Number one, no one may speak until granted the floor. Two, committee members, if you have a question about committee business or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. If you click the participants icon, the participants panel should appear and you should find the raise hand function there. If you still have technical difficulty, you may click the chat icon 
and relay that difficulty. Number three, the chat function should not be used for committee business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert in an, a technical difficulty you're having or to state in writing information like an email address that was already stated aloud on the record as part of the meeting. Give me a second here. Uh, I'm gonna cover a couple more. Uh, when a, a committee member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you and you can unmute yourself so that you can't speak. We are required also by executive order to create a verbatim transcript of this meeting. So please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. And I will work hard to do the same. Let's move on to committee business with agenda item number one. This is a presentation on a temporary public art installation by artist Cecile Chong coming to Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. I believe the artist is with us tonight, as is, I believe, Elizabeth, uh, the senior public art coordinator for NYC Parks. Um, you have the floor, NYC Parks, for this presentation. Um, we'll keep it brief, but um, we're just here to share some information about an upcoming temporary public artwork uh, coming to Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. Um, just a little bit of background on our program, though I know many of you are very familiar with it. Um, the Art in the Parks program permits temporary public artworks in parks citywide. Temporary public artworks are on view to up for up to one year. Um, as part of our program, artists are responsible for um, the installation of their artwork, maintenance, fabrication, they provide general liability insurance as well as a security deposit to ensure that they remove the artwork at the end. Um, we have a long history of doing public art exhibitions at Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. Right now, um, there's a series of three works by the artist Jim Renner, which went in in the winter, which you may recall we presented in December or November, I don't remember. <laughs> And we also have a small piece by artist Noah Bornstein called the Peace Gorilla, which is also on view um, in the middle of the plaza. Um, so I'm, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Cecile to speak about the work that will be coming to the plaza in um, October. It'll be going on the sculpture platform. And I will just share, we have worked with Cecile a number of times and she's been fantastic to work with. Um, she's exhibited her work in Prospect Park, Sunset Park, and um, at the Lewis H. Latimer House in Queens with parks, um, as well as other public spaces around the city. So Cecile, I'll turn it over to you to speak more about your work. Great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And thanks everyone for having me today. Uh, I would like to share my screen, Brandon, if it's possible. So sure. I, great, thank you. Okay, you should be able to share your screen right now, actually. I looks like I made a co-host. Oh, you made me host? Co a co-host. So you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Um, I'm pressing share and nothing is happening yet. Did you click on share screen? Um, let me see. I have allowed Zoom to share your screen. Mm -mm. No, it's not happening. Okay, click on share your screen and then there are a number of screens that you have that you should have yeah. the option of being able to share. Right, I've been doing this pretty often but it's not happening right now. Um, do you think Elizabeth has my images that? I also have images. Okay. Great. That if you just give me a moment to pull up. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. I am pressing share and it's telling me. Okay, so I know you sent me a bunch of files that you wanted that you would share, so just let me know which ones you want me to share and when. Yeah, you can, they're numbered, so I can just talk to them, talk about them by the number that they're listed. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, meanwhile, I just start talking uh, about my work a little bit. 
Uh, so I'm Cecile Chang. Um, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I work with painting, sculpture, installation work. My work is about cultural interaction and interpretation and also um, the commonalities that we share with nature and with each other. Um, I, I wanted to share a little bit um, about the breadth of my work. So I have a few images of my paintings and uh, my installations in previous sites. Um, yeah. Are there any particular images you want me to share right now? Um, you could share all of them, starting with the number zero or one. Okay. Okay, great. So this is an example of um, a painting. Uh, they're done with encaustic, which is my main material. Encaustic is a very ancient medium. If you see the mummies from um, Fayyam, area in Egypt, they're actually painted with the similar material. And there are three elements to my work, which is also tie into my installation. Uh, I was born in Ecuador to Chinese parents, so materials are very important to me. Um, materials in my work become like cultural signifiers representing a place or an identity. Uh, so I have volcanic ash, I have circuit boards material representing how humans, um, humanity, we all share, te share technology these days. Um, I also appropriate figures from different books from East and West. And a third element is that I have um, these little green creatures that are in, in these baskets that I call Wawa. Uh, Wawa, it means a child or a baby in Quechua, the native language of Ecuador. And I, they actually become a recurring symbol of humanity in my work. And in my paintings, I sprinkle them on branches um, or on the floor, like uh, on the landscape, like fruit or rocks or flowers. Next, please, Brandon. Next image. Moment. Oh. Yeah, so this is um, another, another painting with similar uh, materials. And you see the wawas on the branches. Next, please. Um, so growing up in Ecuador, I saw a native women carrying their babies really tight. And I also heard that the babies are swaddled and a good swaddle is when the baby can stand on the table like a bottle. Uh, so in New York City, I thought, what can I do with that information as an artist? Uh, so I literally started uh, swaddling plastic bottles uh, in a very traditional way with burlap um, and plaster. And then I dipped them in encaustic and then I paint them. And for outdoors, I actually add, um, add a layer of fiberglass and also aqua resin. And depending on the site, I add, um, I think about the color to make it somewhat site specific. Um, next, please. So this is a, a, a photo that I took a few years ago of a native woman in Ecuador, the way they carry their babies. Um, next, please. And here's another photo. Uh, the next one should be of the installation. Um, Uh, this one was done at the Louis Latimer house. The first site was actually in Sunset Park in Brooklyn. Um, I was triggered by uh, the former president's attitudes towards immigrants. And 
um, I thought about um, I thought about my childhood experience of learning about El Dorado, which means the golden, when the Spaniards arrived in Latin America and demanded this gold from the natives. As we know, the gold was never found. And I thought, what if I would present it in New York City as a contemporary archeological site? I also read somewhere that 49% of New York City households speak a language other than English. So I really wanted to honor these immigrant families. So I created a hundred of these Wawa sculptures and I painted 49 of them gold. Um, this is a picture of actually the second site, which is the Louis Latimer House in Queens. Uh, Louis Latimer was an African-American inventor um, that had, a, his contribution was the filament of the light bulb. Um, so to honor his um, work, I made the faces of the sculptures glow in the dark. Um, next, please. Great. And this was another site. This site uh, was in the Bronx. This is a traveling uh, installation, one borrow per year. Um, this one was in 2019 um, at Wave Hill, and it was part of an installation titled Figure in the Floral. So I made the faces of the Wawa sculptures kind of bloom uh, like a flower shape. Um, yeah, next please. Maybe we'll just show one or two more. Let's see what comes up. Maybe the last one on the list, Brandon, if you can. Uh, or the last two, I wanted to show a photo of, of the Snug Harbor one. Yes, thank you. So this is the installation right now. It's at Snug Harbor on uh, Staten Island. Um, the way I place the hundred sculptures, I place them six feet apart, uh, referencing our current times with COVID. Um, and I also wanted to honor the history of Snug Harbor of being um, a sailor's retirement home. So I, um, the entire shape uh, referenced like an abstract boat or a uh, compass needle. Um, yeah, and uh, since I've been researching blue and white wear, besides the gold ones, I also painted them um, blue and white. Um, let's see if we can show the last image. For, um, for the Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza, since uh, I know it's concrete and you guys might be wondering how I'm thinking about placing them, I'm actually going to build um, a platform. Um, and in case you guys are wondering how, how, the, how the sculptures are secure on the bottom, um, since it's plastic bottle inside, I drilled a hole and um, I plugged in a, like a 14 inch rebar. And then um, I also used construction foam. So that would hold the, the rebar together. And then depending on the site, I would drill, drill a hole in the ground and then plug in um, the sculpture also with construction foam. Uh, but here they will be bolted um, on the platform and secure from the bottom. Uh, Elizabeth and I, we're going to do a site visit um, soon in the summer. And then I will decide exactly in terms of, um, in terms of placement uh, and color. So right now this sketch is not going to look like that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. And also this sketch was actually referencing um, the shape that it is right now at Snug Harbor. So I truly feel that it's, um, that it's a perfect place in Manhattan and in New York City uh, to complete this five borough and five location traveling exhibition. Um, I've been really admiring the site since 2012 when I saw Magdalena Abak um sculptures. And of course, um, being so close to the United Nations, it makes me think all these international languages that immigrants um, are bringing um, and add to the richness and 
uh, of the city and of the world and also enhance the richness of the culture. Um, I, I want to mention that I also got a grant through Lower Manhattan Cultural Council for the installation and for public programs. So uh, right now I have um, like a poetry reading in mind, maybe in different languages, um, of course, in English and, you know, languages that anyone that lives nearby can share. Um, to honor location and also to honor our individual and collective history. Um, I'm not sure if it will happen in Zoom or in person uh, yet. So this is what I have in mind right now. Um, I, I take questions if anyone has any questions and I apologize for not being able to share the, the images, but I think you guys saw the, most of it. They're all on my website by the way, in case you guys have any questions. That's okay. Brendan had your back. Everything uh, to this end looked good. We do have a question from Jeannie. Go ahead. You have the floor, Jeannie. Okay, great. Thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you for your presentation. I love your artwork. It's beautiful. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Just one, just one quest, quick question. Were the, the sculptures that, are, that were placed up in the Bronx around those stones, did, were those stones already placed and you figured to you figured to place your art there, your, your sculptures, or how did that come about? Because I thought that was pretty fascinating. Yeah, thanks for your question, Jeannie. Actually, the, those boulders were already there. Uh, they call it kind of like a, a circle or something like that. So Wave Hill have, has not had like public art in many years. But in 2019, they were considering having uh, art outside again because they have two houses and they use one house as a gallery. So I think that site they have already um, they have already had public art um, in the past, like outdoors. Um, so when the curator, it just happened that you know at the right moment, my studio is at, at Elizabeth Foundations for the Arts is on 39th between 8th and 9th, and we had open studios. And Jennifer McGregor, the curator, usually comes to open studios. And when she came and I told her about my project, I also told her that I was interested in, in showing in a location in the Bronx. So, um, so it was really like a right match in terms of time and, and place. Great, thank you, it was fascinating, Great. thank you. Thank you, and Marty Barrett has a question. Marty, you have the floor. When, is the when are you looking to put the installation in? Um, in October, right, Elizabeth? You can yeah, help. usually wait until after the General Assembly at the UN. So it'd be, you know, we haven't decided the exact dates yet since we're a little ways out, but it'll be October. And the current works are there until the end of August. How tall are the individual objects? Um, they are like 12 to 16 inches. The platform, um, remind me again how tall you think the platform will be, it'll be yeah. pretty low. Yes, pretty low. I was thinking about like a foot and a half off the ground or two, yeah. And uh, Cecile, you have um, skateboard deterrent tabs in the plan, in the works? Is that part of, I believe it is, correct? Yeah, something we we can discuss, but it's something we've done for past works because I know that skateboarding has been an issue um, in this park, and it's we can just add little tabs on the edges of it to keep them from skateboarding across it. But I think the sculptures will also hopefully be at a turn as well. Thank you. Very informative. Uh, can't wait to see it. Thank you, Cecile. Oh, thank you so much. Keep you posted on any programming that Cecile develops if you'd like to know about that. Um, in the fall. Wonderful. Uh, the committee would love to. Um, and I appreciate that El Dorado is a theme and a, also a metaphor for ongoing uh, pursuits of an unseemable, uh, unobtainable results, because uh, that's something I think uh, I'd like to speak for this committee, something that we strive for, but uh, hopefully find those results at the end of that rainbow. It's a great, great theme. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate uh, it. And Brandon, thanks again for helping me problem solve with the slides. Not a problem, happy to help. Okay, agenda item number two, presentation from the New York City School Construction Authority on an upcoming capital improvement project 
at Manhattan Comprehensive Day and Night School located at 242nd Avenue. Now before this presentation, in case you're wondering why this item is in this committee and not in say the Youth and Education Committee, a lot of the issues with SCA's work uh, tend to be environmental in nature. Uh, Stephen, the community relations representative at the SCA is with us tonight, as are, uh, I believe, Nicholas and Constantine, uh, SCA senior project officer and project officer respectively. Uh, Stephen, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Kevin. And again, uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, we're happy to be before your committee. First time presentation, first time communication uh, before your committee. Previously, we were in the education committee reporting on other projects that were of concern in District 6. Uh, we just like to say that uh, we are uh, happy to be before you. We uh, look forward to seeing you in the future on a periodic basis to report our progress. But we're here tonight because we have a project that's upcoming at Manhattan Comprehensive Night and Day uh, that warrants our attention. It's been years in the making. And finally, as with everything else that's budget item related, as you guys well know, Things that start out in the pipeline take a few years to get to fruition and then finally come out at the other end as a project uh, ready to proceed. Uh, we have such a case with this job. Uh, we're uh, going to be at the school to do uh, exterior masonry work and interior work uh, in the building. I'm going to leave the description of the work up to my uh, senior project officer and up to my project officer. But nonetheless, to say is that we're gonna be in the neighborhood for approximately 18 months to possibly two years. Uh, might be shorter than that, uh, but as it stands now, that's the outside number. Uh, we will have a different approach to the working hours since most of the work will be inside the school. Uh, and uh, we stand ready to communicate with the community board and the neighbors, uh, which we have been in touch with surrounding the school uh, regarding the upcoming project. Going forward, uh, if there are any complaints, concerns, or comments, uh, I am the person to reach out to. Uh, Brendan has my information. He can put that up on the, uh, on the, uh, to you guys on the website after we're done. Uh, and please feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. We're more than happy to answer what we can, uh, but we'll always provide an answer, whether it's agreeable or disagreeable uh, to you as a complainer or as a concerned citizens. Uh, Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our senior project officer, uh, Nicholas Cohn Thompson, uh, who is the senior project officer for this project. Let him describe what we're going to be doing, uh, along with our project officer, uh, Constantin Dumirescu. And gentlemen, I turn it over to you now. Nick, is he is he still muted, Brandon? I don't see Nick on. Is He's he? On. All right, he... uh, Constantine should be on. Go to Constantine. Yeah, Constantine is on. And All right, then let's have... If, if, yeah, Constantine can present the project just as uh, as well. Uh, I'm surprised about Nick. He says he's on, but he's muted. Hmm. Is he dialing in? Because I, I think see... He might be, I think he might be dialing in, Brendan. That's the possibility. Do you show a phone number that... Yeah, it ends with 912. 912, I'm not sure. I'm looking up his phone number now to double check that. I can get started. I am, yes, he is. Can you bring him on? He's on 912. Yep, I will. And I see Constantine, uh, you brought him up. He's online also. He's on the, on the call. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say it's star six. That is for unmuting if you're dialing in. Hello? Yeah, Nick, is Hello? that you? Yeah, I, yes, I am me. Hello, Steve. How are you? Hello, Nick. How are you? Constantine, thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, um, uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for your time tonight. Um, as Steve said, uh, we are um, uh, getting active in the building uh, with what amounts to uh, um, a, a sizable capital improvement project. Um, from a community perspective, the way I was explained, this type of job is that the good news is uh, that the city is investing in this building. Uh, it is going to keep this building active and in operation, and that is what our work is ultimately for. Um, our work on this project is about keeping water and moisture out of the building. Um, as Steve said, part of that is a flood elimination. Part of that is some exterior work. Um, um, some of that involves some parapet and roof work. 
Um, so there is exterior work in the building and there is certainly noisy work in the building. Uh, the flood elimination is not the sort of open excavation type you might have seen on other jobs. This is all uh, work done from the inside. Uh, from the community perspective, what this project amounts to is uh, a couple of years of having the building wrapped in scaffold uh, with bridge out front uh, that uh, pedestrian traffic will go under um, and uh, a bunch of off hours work, some of which will be um, exterior work, um, uh, all of which would you know uh, coincide with appropriate um, after hours variance permits, but some of the work would be off hours. Uh, the use of this building is very specific. It has classes, regular instruction that goes on until 10 at night. Um, we do not build with educational instruction going on in the building as a matter of strict policy. And so that pushes us into the after hours. And we understand that is, um, you know, it, 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 the inconvenience goes somewhere. And it means that we're working weekends and nights and uh, certainly as much as we can in the summer. Um, and so that's sort of the fair warning about what we do. Yes, please be in touch with Steve first and foremost. Um, but if there's any specific questions about um, what we're all doing and how, uh, what it means for the community, um, um, you know, we're uh, eager to have that, have that uh, dialogue and um, make sure that uh, nobody's put out by our work. All right. And Nick, just to uh, make it uh, obvious, the summer work would be, if possible, we get it during the daytime, correct? Yeah, um, this our schedule does not afford for too much off, off summer opportunity to do exterior work. So we will be always pursuing to have daytime work whenever we can, um, and certainly the summers. Um, that the, there really is an imperative to defend the programming in the building and to keep them with their active use um, off hours. And it is it is an inconvenience to them to even give us summers, but we have to have some time to do the work um, just because the building needs it in order to stay open. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Nick. Uh, uh, Stephen, you had mentioned questions. Um, uh, yes, if you have any, sir. Yes, I'll start off with a, a comment question and then we'll open it up to any committee members and any members of the public. Now within our community district is Washington Irving High School. Many residents and business owners registered complaints about the noise, dust and other safety concerns there. Also, some of the concerns were about congestion, visibility, and activities by unhoused individuals. Uh, there were also sanitation complaints, including about excess piling up of garbage, plus cardboard stored in uh, tilt trucks with open lids. I know that the City Department of Investigation determined in 2019 that the SCA had not violated any city, state, or federal regulations. Uh, were there any violations found after that? No. And that said, what did the SCA possibly learn from the project that may improve its approach to Second Avenue for the betterment of those who engage with the school and its surroundings? Mr. O'Keefe, uh, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a question filled with uh, information that um, was provided, I guess, by actions that occurred at the school. But what should be revealed is that most of the uh, items of uh, safety and community concern and ensuring that the community was protected were instituted by the SCA. Uh, just to go back, not on a point by point for Washington Irving, but to stress on two major items. The garbage that was spoken about is school garbage. That's number one. That's not our garbage. It's not construction garbage. It's all school garbage. We actually took out of our plan uh, a certain amount of square footage to ensure that we built a shed to house the garbage from the school while we were working at the school. We worked with our partners at DSF to provide the tilt trucks that you referred to so that the garbage could be housed in the tilt trucks as opposed to plastic bags that could be ripped open uh, by vermin or by people uh, if they got uh, near those bags as they used to do in the past. We were in a protected area. The garbage never went past that area. We had a regular school uh, schedule set up for garbage pickup, which uh, worked very well. Uh, if there were any instances of a tilt truck with its top off, it was probably the recyclable containers with the cardboard in it because the bags were piled high. Uh, we had no instances of any uh, ticketing or violations from DEP, from DOS, or any other associated city agency that was tasked with maintaining uh, a vigilance over the cleanliness and the appropriateness of that site. We are leaving that site relatively soon. We're gonna be gone 
by September, the absolute latest. And we're gonna, you're going to have that situation again because unless they figure out a way to deal with that, that garbage is going right back out on the street on the steps of the school where they had put it previously without the advantage of a fenced in area or uh, they'll have the tow trucks, that equipment will be left behind, but you'll have, you'll have a, 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 some sort of a problem with that until they figure out exactly what their plan is to take care of it. Uh, the type of construction done at Washington Irving is extremely night and day, excuse the pun, different from what we're doing at night and day. We had a major, major, major exterior masonry job on that building. We literally rebuilt that building from the inside out, including the surface uh, of that building, including the roofs. Well, I mean, major, major problems with that building. It cost us a lot of money. We had a lot of what we call construction amendments as we discovered problems with the school building. Uh, we're obligated to fix it. Uh, we dealt with the noise. We worked hours that were restricted. Uh, due to the community's concern from the very beginning uh, about this project coming in. They were extremely hostile to us coming in right off the bat. Uh, and uh, it just became uh, a, a long-term discussion prior to the start of the work. We were delayed almost a year before we actually began the work at that school. Uh, but we're finishing up with the work there. Um, as to noise complaints, we worked very hard with DEP we did not violate any noise uh, levels or decibel restrictions as imposed by the DEP noise code. Uh, and as you stated in the uh, 2019 extensive report from the IG's office, the inspector general report that came out uh, in which they interviewed everybody extensively. I mean, I was called probably about 10 times, 11 times on this to produce uh, documentation and reports. As you said, sir, we, uh, we uh, came out of that report uh, satisfactory and with a clean bill of health with no uh, any apparent uh, violations or anything uh, anything different than what sh good construction work should be when we work in a community, uh, especially one that's as tight as that one uh, is by Washington Urban. For Manhattan night and day, we will follow the same with the same protocols. We will make sure that we work in hours uh, that are, we have different hours with this school, unfortunately, because now we have, as Nick said, we have to work with the program in the school, uh, which we did. So we have a unique situation of working late hours, but it's in the school itself. Uh, the exterior work will be done uh, in hours that are daytime or weekends uh, when we can get the chance to be outside and not impact the neighborhood in a, in a great sense. But with all due respect, there will be noise. It's a construction uh, project, one that's badly needed. We realize that there are residential apartments across the street at the Senate building complex. Uh, and we have next door neighbors on East 15th Street uh, uh, with the brownstones at 306, 8 and 10, uh, which we have spoken to the neighbors because uh, we're looking to get licensing agreements to offer protection to them uh, in their backyards and roofs uh, as we do the work. Uh, We've spoken to the businesses around the school, uh, the Life Achievement Center. We've spoken to uh, the Hospital Out Center on the corner uh, and had discussions with them. So going in, uh, I think that we're going to present ourselves in the manner in which we do our work. There will be noise. There will be scaffolding noise as we put it up. We will have late night noise restriction. Uh, at 1030, we will stop all loud machine noise if we're working at night. But that won't happen that often because the school during the school year will have a program that's there till 10 o'clock and we're not gonna work after 10 o'clock outside. We'll work inside. But on the daytime work, that'll be during the daytime hours, which will be the regular construction hours that most people are used to. So we don't think we're gonna have that much of an impact. If we do, again, I am open to comments and concerns from the board if they have it, or the people in the community uh, who may wanna voice their, uh, their concern to me. Thank you, Steve. And it's, it's just welcome. important. Yeah, we keep this line of communication open and we really greatly appreciate the transparency on, on this project. Um, I'm going to have one more question before I open up because a number of uh, community residents have mentioned uh, this question. How long will the project take? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, got, the... I have a large family that just. I hear you. Sorry. I should have looked over, but uh, community uh, residents have asked uh, how long the project will take. I understand uh, we can't keep you to an exact timeline, but what's your 
I'm going to have Nick and Constantine answer that question. They're the construction management team. Yeah, um, um, with the caveat that we don't yet have a, a contract or a start date, uh, you should expect approximately two years um, uh, with uh, scaffold up. Um, this is because uh, of the limited scope exterior. We would try and accelerate that, but uh, I would expect two full years with uh, scaffold and bridge up. Okay. Uh, I wanted to take this up. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity all because I see that uh, Kyle Thide, who is the chair of community board six is on board. And I just wanted to see if Kyle has any questions before we wrap this agenda item. Sure. Hey, Kevin, thank you. Uh, no specific questions. Uh, just want to make sure that the concerns about sanitation noise um, are obviously taken seriously. We like to be proactive on any of these issues. We want to make sure that you can obviously conduct the construction in the proper way and the most efficient way. And we also want to make sure that the community, whether they are uh, visitors to the district or using that bike lane or you know uh, using transportation or living in the area, um, are comfortable as well. So thank you, Kevin, for those questions. Those are pretty much my questions as well. Thank you, Kyle. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I'm looking if there's any questions, committee members, um, if you could raise your hand. And I see that uh, Jeannie, I believe, is your hands, is that a newly raised hand? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I don't have a question. Just wanted to alert you that there's a question in the Q&A when you're ready. Okay, can you, uh, can you raise it, please? Sure. Um, the question is, will the bike lane be kept open? That's a good question. Uh, we don't have the contractor site safety plan yet, so we're not sure where the contractor is going to put his staging area for his equipment and for the other obvious things like a dumpster and a porta potty. Uh, we have to still wait on that. So. It's possible it probably will be on 2nd Avenue. I don't know if they would put it on East 15th Street. It's possible they could put it there too. But I think we have to wait until we get the GCs, the general contractors, uh, site safety plan. Is it the community board's wish, obviously, that the bike lane not be interrupted? I, I, I would understand that from the onset. Uh, so we can talk with our construction team and see if there's something we, we can do around that or XDOT to maybe divert the lane out past our area if they give it to us on 2nd Avenue uh, and make a request of them to uh, make an alignment change uh, possible. I'm not sure how this is gonna work out because the construction space is an active area when we're working. You know, the construction general contract is in and out. Uh, there might be use of equipment. So uh, I'm not quite sure how that'll be. We'll have to come back to you with that uh, for an answer once we have the site safety plan. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Kyle, you have the oh, floor. Sorry, I think I think Jesus sorry. has an answer to that question. Go ahead, Jeannie. I'm sorry. Um, I see in the Q and A that Jesus had had the answer had an answer to that question. No, 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 no. It was uh, since it was being answered live. I just um, indicated that it was being answered live. Oh, okay. I read the question wrong. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Kyle, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, just more of a more of a comment. Uh, thank you, Steve, for for mentioning the site safety plan, uh, and also for Nick and Constant for mentioning that a contract has not been finalized yet. Uh, just a comment, you know, it'd be great. You know, I appreciate you guys being really proactive in reaching out to the communities, in particular the community board on this particular project. I think it would be really useful once those plans and contracts are finalized to come again uh, to the committee to just kind of discuss those details. Uh, uh, with the committee. Uh, yes, uh, I'll speak with Nick and Constantine. Once we have a GC on board and all the other items have fallen into place as part of the process of moving forward, uh, we'll, we'll seek out Jesus and Jesus can set something up and we can come before you and uh, just do a, a quick presentation of what the plan would encompass. Uh, but we may ask the community board for help that, you know, if we get a certain thing with the bike lane and we, and you lose it, you might have to petition DOT to move it around also. I know in that particular point, because it's actually right before 14th street, that lane, I know because it goes past the hospital, past the park, it gets, it's wide at that point. And uh, it's, it's an important bike lane up to 14th street and to cross over or to go down. Uh, but again, the space is extremely limited over there. I'm not going to kid you. you. You know the area as well as I do. 
uh, and we don't put we don't go on the sidewalk if it's absolutely not necessary. If we can, we will. But I'll leave it up to Nick to figure that out with uh, the construction management team. Nick, you there? Nick? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, just a sl slow with the draw. Yeah, no, what you're saying is right. The, the details of how the logistics pan out, we, we'll have to arrange with a contractor once we have one executed. Um, and that formal site safety is what is part of our permitting and approval um, with DOB and DOT. So we definitely agree. What we'll have to figure out those details and be in touch so that everybody's aware what the plan is. Uh, and we will certain, certainly keep that in mind uh, that it's in the, in the community's expressed interest to maintain that bike lane open, which I imagine DOT will require gets coordinated one way or the other. Great. Thank you for amplifying those concerns. Um, I think I could telescope uh, accurately that those will continue to be raised about the bike lane. Um, we are going to, uh, I know that was a, for informational purposes and they certainly was informational. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Steve, uh, that was good. We will move on unless uh, any committee members or members of the public would like to raise um, anything. I don't see any. Uh, so let's move on to agenda item number three. All right, we're going we're gonna to take our leave. Uh, you got it. Thank you, thank Steve. Thank you, sir, for your time and thank you to the committee for having us uh, before you. Hey, welcome to uh, Environment and Parks Committee. Hope it's <laughs> the beginning you. of a long relationship. All right, everybody. Yeah, thank you all. Bye -bye. Be well. Be well. Uh, agenda item number three is the discussion of Stuyvesant Town combined heat and power plant plans. On board to make a presentation is Ann Greenberg. Uh, as a lot of you know, Ann is the vice president of the Stuyvesant Town Peter Cooper Village Tenants Association. Ann, uh, if you're ready for a presentation, um, you have the floor. Thank you and thank you and good evening to the committee. Uh, you're getting me tonight because Susan Steinberg, our president has a personal commitment. I'm really here not so much to make a, a presentation as to give you an update, although I do have some visuals that you might like to see if anybody wants to see what the, uh, the actually built plant looks like from Avenue C. I'm happy to share my screen. Um, I don't know how many of you have actually seen it. So if you, you should be able to share now. your screen. Okay. Uh, Let me make this bigger. And this is just to put it in perspective, this is uh, at Avenue C between 15th and 16th on the west side. Uh, correct. correct. Yeah, the west side. And those are our buildings behind it. And you can see this is the chimney that was built right next to the building, sort of blocking a little bit of the view and the air perhaps of these windows. So um, when we were here in January, uh, the, the then general manager declined to participate, although we know he was in fact you know, observing. And then we found out shortly thereafter that he had decided to leave the property or leave the job and somebody new came in and after and you can correct me on this, Kevin, about six weeks tops. Uh, the new guy said, no, not for me, not gonna stay. And then we got a third general manager. So since then, which that takes us probably till March at some point, he's getting his, you know, figuring out his job and the place and we're adjusting to one another. So, in that time period, we did try to set up the meeting that you, Kevin, had suggested we have with management. We were told that they were willing to meet with us, but we had to submit our questions in advance. We took a little time to put together a fairly granular list of questions. We submitted them and then weeks passed without any response. And then the person handling it was on vacation. And then while all of this was going on, we, we were told by the DOB that they had issued a letter of intent to revoke the permits and the applications. And in fact, if they did that, then that was basically gonna be the ball game. And that's what we thought at the time. While this was going on, management had agreed to stop all work on this plant, but they seemed to keep finding little things to fix. There was a leak, there was facade repair. We're hearing from tenants 
They are continued that there is work going on. There are tire tracks going up the steps to the back end of this. Uh, in also in January, the uh, the electeds had sent a letter to the head of the DOB, the commissioner of the DOB, and which we've put online. Anybody can read it. And then that was only the DOB is only one piece of it. They can control what you know, the building aspect, but they do not concern themselves with the operation of a power plant. That goes to the state agency, the DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation. And in February, Carolyn Maloney, Brad Hoyleman, Harvey Epstein, Keith Powers, and Gail Brewer met with the DEC about the current status of Beam Living's permit application and the jurisdiction of the DEC over the plants. In fact, they were negotiating, the DEC was negotiating a penalty with, uh, with Beam Living. We do not know what that penalty was, but the electeds have asked for a public hearing on the permit. And environmental justice is an important component of all of this because we are right next door to whatever's on the other side of 14th Street, which is a lot of NYCHA housing and other low income housing. The next thing that happened, April 20th, the DOB issued their response. Oh, actually, I sort of jumped the gun on this, that they agreed with us on the zoning issue, namely that these plants were not accessory use because we are not getting the benefit of the electricity. The electricity is going right back to Con Ed to offset Beam Living's bill. And so that's when they issued this letter of intent to revoke approvals and permits. And then the elected sent a letter to the DEC commissioner to notify him of the DOB letter and asking the agency to reject Blackstone's application. At this point, Blackstone's application is now for two CHP plants because when they decided they wanted to build one on 20th Street under the garage, the DEC said, no, this is really one project. And even though you've built pretty much built this first one, both of them together a one project, you must reapply for all your permits. So uh, we subsequent, we're still, you know, waiting on this. We had a mayoral forum, four candidates showed up. I would say it may be of interest to the committee that only Catherine Garcia seemed to know what we were talking about when we asked them to opine on, on, on the um, CHP plant and support us. And in fact, she, her, her response was we should be going for geothermal, not for CHP, which by now we all have kind of figured out is not the way of the future. Then on May 11th, the commissioner of the DOB walked back her previous position and said, you know, we think it really is okay. The zoning issue isn't really a problem. However, when she was pushed on why this was not a commercial use, not a benefit to all the tenants, she could not answer us. And we still have not heard back as to what her justification for, for changing her, her mind or her position was. Subsequent, on the same day, actually, we made a presentation to the Community Board 3, which Kevin attended. So they are now aware of the situation. And since there, a lot of their residents will, are likely to be affected by both the Avenue C plant and the 20th Street plant, if that was, um, if that in fact ever got built. However, they did not take any resolution. They asked for more data for their specific area. And we provided what was available to us, which is basically what the city has made public. And uh, so they've had it, we haven't, I haven't heard anything back from them. Now the DEC does have to have a hearing, a public hearing on the environmental justice issue. They have to put out a notice 30 days in advance. It is now June 1st. So it seems unlikely it will happen this month. Perhaps it will happen in July. In the meantime, we have decided, you know, to go more public let more people know in the surrounding area. And so this coming Sunday at 10 in the morning, we are going to have a press event rally at the site of this plant and uh, trying to get the word out, enlist as many people as possible. We do have something like 800 signatures from our own tenants, uh, 
on a petition about this. So there's a lot of concern and we do not know the air modeling study. We do know from management's own reports that the chimneys are in fact not as high as they should be according to good engineering practice. We know this thing does not look anything like what they told us it was gonna look like. It looks, aside from being bigger, it was supposed to be clad in brick. It was supposed to blend in. We don't know what the, you know, the downwash might be from these chimneys right on top of playgrounds, our playgrounds, across the street playgrounds, Tompkins Square Park, if, it, if the pollution, um, you know, if the emissions penetrate that far. So uh, this is, to me, maybe oddly taking a really long time, but we're not, we're, we haven't really resolved very much of anything yet. Everything is, the wheels are still turning, things are still in motion. Can he, Kevin, you're muted. I am, some people wish it was <laughs> permanently, uh, but it's not. I saw your lips moving. <laughs> uh, thank you, Anne, is what I was saying. And as I had voiced in the January meeting of this committee, it's not important not only for those who now engage with the district, but for future generations that we protect the community from any harm. So I want to thank you, your Tenants Association president, the aforementioned Susan Steinberg, and the others of the association who have dedicated the time and also the del deliberation on your research. Um, one of the concerns I had was we seemed to have a lot of people talking that weren't scientists. My dad was a public school uh, earth science teacher for 39 years, and he would always ask, well, have you talked to the scientists? Um, have you talked to the scientists, and have you felt like your research you're having obviously a press conference and rally has to the point where you're uh, assured that this is the, all the concerns that you have raised about even things like asthma. Have, what have the scientists weighed in at? And where so we that all that data, that is all data provided by the city. That is data that is like their community air survey. That is uh, their reports on community districts. Uh, I looked at what they reported for our district for CD6, what they report for CD3. This is not anecdotal. This is the, the research that the city itself has gathered. Now I will say it's not up to the minute because it takes time to gather the data, uh, you know, analyze the data and then, you know, put it out there. So maybe it's 2000, they just came out with some stuff and that was 2019. And I think we can all assume that anything during COVID got kind of slowed down, but this was not anything we made up. We also hired, uh, we've also spoken with and gotten a report from an expert, which I uh, don't think I've put that on the website, but we do have that. And, you know, we've looked at what the government's agency's own websites say. I didn't, this was not like, oh, what do my Facebook friends say? No, this was everything we looked at was from, you know, information publicly available from the city, from the state. That you vetted, uh, that you vetted it and you're, again, you're, you're confident that well, these are I, not. I don't know how to vet what the city department, you know, what the community air survey puts out. You know, yeah, but you know things like what year they were done and. Uh, yes, it was in our, it was in our PowerPoint presentation. I had all the, the attributions with the dates. It was through two, that was through 2018 for CB3, I, which I was able to update certain things and also adjust it for their area. So, you know, Sometimes the URLs didn't work, but I'm able to go back and, you know, find the URL. So this is not made up stuff. And um, frankly, you would have to reinvent the wheel, you know, to check anything that, you know, we've looked at. Mm -hmm. And then we've, there's some stuff that management, they, they, you know, as I said, they're the ones who put out what good engineering practices for, a ch for chimney height is. And they themselves admit that they have not met that those standards. I will point out, you mentioned uh, that, that Stytown management was not at the last committee meeting in January that discussed this. You're right, they were not in person, but they did uh, give us a, uh, a statement to read, which is what brought up the possibility of the working group. Uh, along those same I lines- think, I think, I think 
the manager was actually attending. I think somebody saw his name on the list of attendees, but you know. Uh, well, actually we found, and Jeannie will back me on this, we found somebody had actually put his name on there and then uh, basically did some prank questions. It certainly was not the voice of the wow. former general manager. Um, so anybody out there that's thinking of doing that, we're uh, pretty good at our forensic, so it might good. not get past us. Um, yeah, I will mention that- uh, Sorry, sorry. I'd like to sh if anybody is interested, I do have, I was able to uh, create maps showing the half mile radius, which is the minimum default radius required for doing environmental studies. So if anybody is interested in that, I will, I can uh, show you what that looks like for our- well, I would suggest, I was gonna say that, um, we have a long agenda. I, you know, that if you do have a website, and I know the association has a website to be able to put all these things up there, um, the, the house in one place would certainly yeah. give us the time to, to go through there you know, I think if we were to go through this now, right. it could take, you know, all evening. Right. Yeah, no, it's just a map, but um, I'm not sure I've put that up. I actually put it up on our Facebook page, but a lot of the documents, the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation to you, the uh, various letters back and from elected responses, that has been up on our website now. You know, it's been ongoing as they yes. come in. And I, I would continue. Have... I would. I would continue to do that, and we'll let people know that. Um, I will mention that Stuy Town Management was sent an invitation six days ago for this committee meeting to attend. They did respond on Friday with the following statement. I will read it. Beam Living continues to value its strong working relationship with Community Board Six's Parks Committee meeting. Unfortunately, given the short notice of the invitation to speak, and you know, with our team being tied up on Memorial Weekend and their hard work supporting the thousands of residents at PCVST. We are unable to attend this meeting. At this time, there is no further update to what we have previously communicated. As always, anyone wanting the facts about our work to improve the energy efficiency of our community should visit our website. That's the end of their statement. Now on the Stytown website, uh, it's actually stytown.com slash CHP for those right. of you uh, playing along at home. There's a section titled Update to Community Board 6 Meeting Questions on CHP. Um, and has the Tennis Association had a chance to see the responses to the 15 questions on that website page? And if so, what if any issues with Stytown's responses does the Tennis Association have with those responses? We saw that they put that up and given all the work we were putting in on this and a couple of other really big issues, we, we decided that to get involved in a back and forth would might not be the most productive use of our time. And it was sort of like their, their heels are dug in on their position and we, we disagree. And we just decided to essentially not get into a pissing contest and just okay. keep per pursuing what we felt were our strong legal uh, arguments. Okay, because um, obviously when we started this in January and I had put this on the uh, environment meeting as soon as we knew the environment was going to be part of the uh, committee, um, we we're looking to hope to have a working group because sometimes you can't get things done uh, through that type of collaboration. One of the questions on the Stytown website is, you have mentioned convening a working group with interested stakeholders. When will this occur? Stytown's answer is, as part of the NYSDEC air permitting process, we will submit an environmental justice analysis and related public participation plan, PPP, to NYSDEC for approval. Those documents will publicly be available on this website once they are prepared. And once approved, we will implement the PPP, which will include opportunities for public comment on the project. The working group will be part of the public process. In the meantime, you can review the permitting documents available on this website and submit any questions to chp at beamliving.com. Now, I take it you've read that and like you said, you just feel that it's time is, um, right. is burning and it's time right. to move to a different- I would also say a lot of those, those permits that they've put up on, that look like, they're basically like, we can construct a shed we can dig a trench. They're not, they're not necessarily um, the real meat of the matter, which is what, is what are the emissions? What is the air quality? I don't think they've put up an air quality study. 
Um, so it looks like they've put up a lot and it, definitely when you do one of these things, there's a lot of moving parts, but some of those moving parts are not like the really big concerns that we have. Okay, I just think that in spirit, in, in, that in spirit, it'd be nice that if, uh, whether it's after the press conference before to move to, you know, getting both uh, the Tennis Association and Stytown management to the same table to really make sure that, uh, you know, your voices are amplified and that uh, they, it's sometimes face to face, as you well know, um, can move the needle quicker and stronger. That said, I will move on to see if there are any public, uh, I'm sorry, any committee questions uh, for this matter. And I, I, I understand you sort of had to be at the January meeting to see a lot of what Ann and I are going back and forth on. So um, if you weren't at the January meeting, any committee members, I apologize that we get got a little bit into the weeds, but I think that's important because it's a very detailed, deep um, discussion. I had asked Dan, send me as much data as you can because I really want to understand this as, as much as I can. Uh, any questions from the committee? Um, and if not, um, we have Jeannie that is looking to see if there's any public um, virtual hand raised. I will stop my share. Yeah, I don't see any questions from the public uh, or statements or comments. Okay. Um, again, I will look to see if there's any committee questions, concerns, comments, uh, anything. I do not see any at this time. Um, I did promise, uh, let's see what time, it's just after eight, I did promise that uh, uh, the Parks Department, we would try to start uh, the next agenda item, oh, after 7.50, so we're a little bit, not too late, but a little bit late. Um, going once, going twice, okay, we will move on. Thank you, Ann, thank you to Thank Susan. you, and thank you to the committee. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number four is a presentation from the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation on the installation of water service at Peter Detmold Park. Uh, let's see, Steve Simon, the Chief of Staff of the Park Department's Borough Commissioner, uh, I believe is with us this evening to start this agenda item. Uh, for this item, we should also have Deputy Director of Engineering uh, Raymond uh, Pomaris, um, also Lead Civil Engineer Heidi Machino and project manager uh, Prabesh Adkari. I apologize if I did not pronounce any of those names correctly. Yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, can you hear me? Uh, thank you. Um, we, uh, we, we have, as you know, uh, two items on the agenda tonight. Uh, Peter Detmold Park, the water service installation is the uh, first one. And uh, you know, we um, haven't had water service in the park uh, uh, I think for at least a couple of years. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, Council Member Powers uh, allocated money to us uh, in this fiscal year. And uh, we began working on the project and now have a, a proposed design. Uh, th um, uh, this particular project, I believe in comparison to the next one is uh, uh, fairly cut and dried. Uh, we're basically uh, uh, putting in a new water line and uh, making connections and installing uh, new drinking fountains. Uh, you'll. you'll uh, uh, Prabesh will be uh, doing the presentation, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, fairly short, especially in comparison uh, to the next one. So uh, we appreciate uh, your, your adding this one uh, to uh, uh, to the agenda. Uh, so uh, uh, if we can, I'd like to just turn it right over to uh, uh, Prabesh. Yes, thank you, Steve. Um, always good to hear from you. And uh, Prabesh, you do have the floor. Hi, good evening, everybody. So this is Prabez. Um, I will be working as a project manager for Peter Detmold uh, Park Water Service Reconstruction. Uh, the park is located at East 49th Street. And as Steve said, it has been funded by city council uh, with a total budget of 480,000. Uh Okay. Yeah, Prabesh, I don't think they see your presentation. Yep. Yeah, so give, give me one second. Okay. Sorry. And then, Brendan, do we have that presentation in case you need to uh, put it put it up? I I could share it as well. Yeah, oh. it is not allowing me to. 
share my screen. Okay, just give me a moment. I will. Okay, you should be able to share it now. Uh, Ray, can you do it, or is uh... yeah? Uh, I'm still disabled. If you if you could give me permission, uh, I could try to share. Uh, well, uh, Prabesh, are you okay now? Uh, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay. So everybody, everybody can see my screen. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So let me start again. So I will be working as a project manager for Peter Detmold Park Water Service Reconstruction, and the project has been funded by City Council with a total budget of four hundred and eighty thousand. Um, the goal of our project is to install new new water service. Uh, actually, it's uh, replacing existing water service with new line and connecting from New York City DEP water main. And we will be installing RPG on the water line inside the park. And our goal also include replacing existing drinking fountain with bottle filler and a quick coupler. There's an existing quick coupler, which we will be replacing with new quick coupler and also installing new bottle filler with hose bigot and dog ball and dog run person on the park. Uh, Prabesh, to explain to them what an RPZ is. So RPZ is a device that has to be installed as per DEP's requirement to protect uh, DEP's water main. Uh, for, to prevent uh, uh, the back water from, from to people to, back into the uh, water system. Right, to, to prevent the water back back into the DEP's water main. So this is the project uh, location. This is a flood map here. And this is the surrounding land use around the park. And this drawing here is a tree inventory of the park. Um, as you can see, the park is narrow and stressed with a lot of trees in the park. And because of a lot of trees, we have big challenge uh, for design and construction as well. So this, here are a few pictures of the existing condition of the park. A picture on the left is the entrance of the park. It fronts East 49th Street. And on the right side is a corridor leading towards the park. And on the, on the right side picture, you can see a lot of trees on the left and, and there's a retaining wall on its right side. Uh, so picture here, the first the picture on the left is facing north um, and you can see the pedestrian breeze which leads towards the seating area in east, towards east, east river. And picture on the right side is facing towards the entrance of the park. Um, and there's an existing pergola there. And the, pro the proposed location of the RPG is somewhere in between the pergola and the street sign there on the left side. And on the right side, there's an existing quick coupler, which we will be replacing with a new one. So this is the this is dog run. Uh, the first picture, the picture on left, is looking west, and it, this picture shows a more clear view of the pedestrian bridge. Picture on the right side is facing west of the dog run. So this is our proposed work inside the park. Uh, blue line is the existing DEP water main and the red lines are the only lines we will be installing new. And the yellow line is the existing, existing water line that runs through the park. And as you can see all the roots there spreading underneath. So that is, the, that is one of the reasons why we are using majority of the existing water lines. Um, and and Prabesh, we're also doing work right at the entrance on the street level, are we not? Uh, at the uh, to make the connection to the DEP water main. Right, the red line there is connection between the DEP water main and inside the park, and we will be connecting that portion to the existing water line, which is shown in yellow. And towards the middle, you can see 
uh, existing quick coupler there, uh, which will be replaced with new quick coupler. And across the quick coupler is the location where we will be installing new RPZ and hooking, hooking up with existing lines running through the, through the park. This is continuous another part. Uh, the yellow line is existing line. And this blue circle here is existing drinking fountain, which will be replaced with new bottle filler. And towards the dog run on the right side of the park uh, will be new bottle filler with dog ball and hose spigot. And there is existing um, quick coupler, which we will be removing as per the DEP's requirement to protect the line. Uh, that quick coupler is right close to the fence of the dog run. So these pictures are the site furnishings. The picture on the left is rock and closer. We will be enclosing our RPG with this rock, rock and closer. And on the right side, is the proposed location of the bottle filler with dog ball and the dog and the dog run portion of the park. So these are also the site furnishing. Uh, the picture on the left is bottle filler, and the existing drinking fountain will be replaced by this bottle filler. And the drawing in the middle is the quick coupler box, which will be used for irrigation purpose. And the picture on the right is the bottle filler. I'm sorry, the picture on the left is bottle filler with dog ball, which will be installed in dog run. And picture on the right bottle filler, this will be the, this will be the bottle filler, which will be replaced. The rip, uh, I'm sorry, the existing drinking fountain will be replaced with this bottle filler. So this picture here to show how RPG actually looks like. Um, and this RPG will be enclosed with this rock enclosure um, in, the, in, the, in the park. So this, uh, this is the proposed location of the RPG rock and RPG and the rock enclosure. Um, this is located somewhere in between Pergola and the street sign uh, right next to the FTR drive inside the park. So this is, this is our last slide and this is the overall schematic of the proposed work. And if there is any questions, I will try my best to address it. Thank you very much. Uh, if we do have questions, uh, committee members, and uh, Jeannie will be looking at any public uh, comments or questions, uh, this would be the time to raise them. Um, while we're looking for those hands, uh, Steve, I think, just bear with me for a second. What action, if any, uh, from this committee do you require for this project to continue it's clear to me that there's a real need here with this installation of water service, but um, just wanted to see if you could articulate what the role you feel is with this committee. Well, um, I mean, uh, Ray could probably uh, confirm this for me, but um, uh, I think we're, we're basically looking upon this as being a replacement in kind. Um, and I don't think uh, we're required to bring it before uh, the Public Design Commission. Is that correct, uh, Ray? That's correct, Steve. Yes, um, we're just bringing the water service up the code by installing the RPZ and also making sure there's adequate water, water supply. And now you have a bottle filler with a hose bib so you could wash down the dog run area and the dog hole. Okay, but there. so it'll be better than the spigot they have out there now. Right. But the, uh, the fact that we're putting in these new uh, uh, bottle fillers or drinking fountains, uh, that would not trigger uh, our having to go before PDC. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so uh, Kevin, the bottom line is um, we don't necessarily need a resolution from the community board. Uh, we're really here uh, primarily because, uh, well, we're obligated to be here because we're, we're supposed to consult with you on every one of our capital projects. But uh, if, uh, uh, if you uh, don't wish to do a resolution, it, uh, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't set us back in any way. Um, our preference would be that you give us a resolution so we can have it in our files and so we can show that we have community support for the project in case any other any questions come up in the future. Uh, but it's really it's up to you. Thank you, Steve. I yeah, and I and I realize you do always bring this these, uh, to our attention for informational 
uh, purposes, which we greatly appreciate. So thank you for, for expanding on that. Um, as you may know, as, as committee chair, I cannot bring any resolutions to the floor, propose any. So I will leave it, uh, that would have to be left to any committee members when I open the floor now, unless we have committee, unless anybody, anybody on the committee wants uh, to motion anything, um, you can certainly do so at this time. I see a hand raised, that would be Jeannie. Uh, sorry, Kevin, just a quick question. Do we need to hear comments from the public first before we go with the motion? Yes, and I didn't know if there were any. Um, I, don't, I don't see any, but I don't know if you wanted to say it one more time. Yes, I will say it one more time. Thank you. Uh, anybody from the public, if you do have any questions, please type them into, uh, right, Jeannie? The best thing is to type them into chat. Correct. Correct. I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, but uh, Mark Thompson has his hand raised. Um, so Mark, you have the floor. Sorry, I was, I was just gonna propose that we do a resolution of support. Okay, and then before we do that, thank you, Mark. Uh, Paige has her hand raised. Paige, was this along the same lines? Paige? I wanna second Mark's um, resolution. Wow, that was smooth. Great, I see a, I get a first and a second. Um, I'm gonna leave this part uh, to Brendan to uh, go through the roll call and then to formally announce the result of the vote. Actually, Brendan? before then, speaking of questions, I see that Marie Louise Handall has typed in the Q&A that, um, that she has a few questions, not specifying which questions, but that there are a few questions that she has. Okay, is it on this topic um, or is it on a later agenda item? Do we know? I don't know. like on this topic. Yes, we should uh, give uh, that individual the floor. And then Jeannie, was that why your hand was raised? Um, yes, actually, or I, yes, fine, <laughs> yes. Okay, I, I just wanna make sure uh, uh, protocol wise, uh, Brendan, we did have um, a resolution proposed in a second. Are we able to cut in and have this public discussion at this point? Before the vote? Um, yeah. All right. Um, then let's have, uh, let's, let's give this individual the floor, please. And if this individual can keep it brief, I'm um, sorry, I didn't catch the name, uh, though you mentioned it. Um, maybe. Hello. Can, can you ahead. hear me? Yes, if you can mention your name, please. Great, and, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'll make this as brief as possible. I'm Marie Louise Handel. I am a, um, the chair of the Parks Committee of the Turtle Bay Association, and I oversee what's going on uh, here in the park. We do have a friends organization, uh, which is not as active as we'd like them to be, but we are, are looking for funding, et cetera, for them. Uh, as a separate organization from TBA. And uh, we also have, of course, uh, a wonderfully active volunteer group uh, that is part of the dog run. Uh, they're known as PDP ARF. And um, I won't go into all the details, but I had three questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a lot of volunteers who will be doing gardening in the park. And a long time ago, we couldn't, uh, uh, use the hoses. We have hoses. We want to water plants. We want to do gardening. Will the new uh, uh, water facilities uh, make it possible for us to attach uh, a, a watering hose and things like that? Uh, as long as the work is getting done, I want to make sure we don't have to revisit it. Uh, I'm assuming that will be done, but I don't know. Uh, I have a question about the timing and uh, I also, uh, I'm giving you all three, I have three questions. Uh, and the third one is those rock enclosures, uh, uh, they're kind of uh, pedestrian looking, shall I say. Uh, I wonder if there's any way uh, that if we could get some private funds, we could uh, make them more aesthetically appealing uh, because I'm assuming those rock enclosures will be uh, fairly visible. Uh, from judging from if I read the mapping correctly. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm asking, feel free, but I thought I'd just summarize it. No, that was, a, that was a wonderful summary. And uh, on behalf of the committee, thank you for your wonderful community work 
in, there. Um, we, Thank we you. Appreciate it. Keep up the great work. And then I'll leave that to the Parks Department to answer. Yeah, let, let me say uh, with, the, with respect to the uh, uh, being able to water the plants uh, um, and uh, uh, Prabesh and uh, Ray and Heidi and can confirm this for me. The purpose of the quick coupler, I believe, is to provide that kind of a connection uh, so that we can uh, have, uh, you, you can have a water source within the park and uh, you would be able to, uh, uh, to do the watering uh, uh, for the, any plantings uh, in the future. I, I don't. Uh, I, I'm not. I don't know the t the uh, vocabulary so much. I I think I I understand it uh, on a technological level. But will someone be available to us after it's installed to kind of walk us through what we can do? Yes, our our park manager who is on this call, uh, Wesley Hamilton, um, whom uh, uh, you should really get to know. Uh, he uh, he will uh, he he will assist you, and his staff and uh, supervisors will assist you. But uh, uh, we, uh, uh, being able to provide uh, watering is one of the uh, uh, benefits of, of this project. Now, in, in terms of the uh, timing, um, um, uh, uh, Prabesh and uh, Ray and Heidi are gonna have to go back and, uh, and they're gonna have to uh, uh, come up with the uh, contract documents which are needed uh, for the uh, bidding process. Uh, that's gonna take them probably uh, 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 Ray, uh, uh, Prabesh, uh, Heidi, should I say that's going to take uh, uh, four to five months? So how many? Uh, how long will that take you? That, that's correct. About four, about five to six, actually. Five to six months. All right. So, okay. uh, so when those documents are prepared, they then get reviewed by uh, uh, two different uh, levels of attorneys uh, uh, in the Parks Department and then downtown at the Law Department, and then we can put the project out for bid. Uh, that you know, uh, then that's a, a process that'll take us. Uh, uh, two to three months to uh, review the bids, uh, make sure that the uh, uh, contractors, uh, assuming we have a successful bidder, uh, pass muster with the city's uh, Vendex system. Uh, we then award the contract, complete the paperwork, uh, register the contract with the controller's office, and then uh, we can uh, issue uh, an uh, order to work and, and uh, have the contractor start working. So we're talking now about probably not being able to start this project uh, for maybe another uh, uh, up to a year and a half from now, um, it's going to take us. Uh, it's going to take them six months to do the contract documents. It's going to take another nine months to go through uh, uh, the bidding and contract award process. So we're, we're going to be uh, we're going to have the status quo in this park most likely uh, uh, for as long as uh, uh, another year and a quarter, year and a half before we can actually start construction. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I want to thank you all for finally uh, uh, getting the funding and being able to start this. We are here to support your efforts, not to give you resistance. And if it's possible, can I be put on an email uh, kept up to date on the day to day, week to week developments so that uh, maybe there's ways that I can uh, assist moving forward? And again, we are looking to do some fundraising. Well, I tell you, I do, I do want uh, to have, I do want to be able to talk to you offline and uh, and uh, and uh, have a connection uh, with you and your group, uh, uh, I, I, which I'm not, I wasn't that familiar with, maybe. So, uh, um, uh, 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 can I give you my email? Yes, please. All and right. I'll send, I'll re, I'll send you an email. Very good. It's uh, Steve Dot Simon. S I M O N at Steve dot S I M O N. It doesn't get simpler than that. Uh, right. Steve dot Simon at parks dot NYC uh, dot gov. Okay. And then maybe Brendan could put it in the chat as well, just in case. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I've I've got, got okay. I've got it, Steve. I'll be in touch with you. And, and then we can, and we can pick up where, where we leave off now. And I'm sorry, what, what was your what was your third question? Uh, it was the timing, the oh. couplers, and then uh, I was looking at the uh, rock enclosures. Oh, the rock enclosure. If they well, could be made more aesthetically attractive and I, if I, funds are needed for that, we well, could talk. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. I, I, uh, uh, 
I, I don't want uh, I don't want Ray, Heidi, and Prabesh to hear me right now, but I agree with you. So uh, uh, so yeah, I would, I, would, I would like to do something to address that thing up. And it, there's only one. Uh, don't say it. It's uh, don't say rock enclosures in plural. Uh, there's only one of them. But, oh, I thought uh, there were two. Okay. No, 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 please, please. There's only one. But uh, uh, but yeah. But let, let's look at what we can do to make it uh, more. Uh, okay, but I'll take them as they are. Okay, I don't well, want to delay anything. No, no, we're not delaying anything. All right, thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you. Thank you, Steve. Look forward hey, thank, also. Thank you, Marie Louise. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. You're doing a great uh, job, committee. Thank you. Thanks for those kind words. Uh, agenda item number five, uh, as uh, Steve, Steve had mentioned, presentation from NYC okay. Department of Parks. Okay, so I'm going to dismiss uh, Ray, uh, Heidi, and uh, Prabesh. Uh, they can uh, uh, they can go have their dinner and. Uh, if they haven't already, thank you, uh, guys. Uh, thank you for for, uh, for chiming in today, tonight. Uh, just very, just very quickly. We're, oh, we, we have a vote. We have a vote on the floor. Yes, we have a vote uh, that has uh -oh. been motioned. Uh oh, Steve, you want to stick around for the result? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not Steve, but the uh, the team want to stick around for the result. Yeah, yeah, they want to stick around. Okay, go ahead, Brendan. Okay, so just to verify, it is a resolution of support of this project, correct? Just want to make sure. Um, Mark, is that uh, appropriately phrased? It was your motion. Yeah, sorry, I'm giving a thumbs up, but yes. <laughs> yep. I just wanted to double check. Mm -hmm. Okay, all that being said, when your name is called, please say whether you are in favor, opposed, abstain, or abstain for cause. Marty Barrett. For. Okay. Matt is not here. Claire is also not here. Jeannie D'Onofrio. In favor. Paige Judge. In favor. Anton Malmer. In favor. Raj Nayar. In favor. Kevin O'Keefe. In favor. Okay. Uh, Gary is not here. Uh, Reshma Patel. In favor. And Mark Thompson. Mm, in favor. Okay. So with eight in favor, nobody opposed, nobody abstaining, and nobody abstaining for cause, the resolution passes. Wonderful. Now we need to know who is writing the resolution. I'm looking for volunteers. If Raj Nair will send you the notes, the comments, only if Raj will do that in great detail, then I'll write the resolution. I will, oh. I will question, I can't uh, force him, but I will be happy to make that request, Mark, on your behalf. Okay, uh, I good will, luck. I will, I will do the best I can. So far, uh, War and Peace is about 500 pages <laughs> long. <so. laughs> well, Thanks, Raj. No problem. Thank you, Raj. Oh, okay, so now, now I can send my people off to dinner? Yes, to uh, brainstorm about what they're going to replace the rock uh, formation with. Yeah, uh, well, that, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that later. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, passing that resolution. The, uh, uh, the next item... Uh, are we ready for that one? Yes, we are. Glick Park. All right. So, um, so th this is a present. Is Molly Hollister on the call, by the way? Uh, she I may know, be. I know that she's very interested in uh, Glick Park, but um, so th this is a uh, much more complicated project because it involves uh, the uh, structural uh, underpinnings of uh, Glick Park and uh, and the uh, fact that uh, similar to uh, other uh, areas along the East River. We've suffered a great deal of deterioration and we have to come up with a plan here to, uh, uh, to um, uh, basically rehabilitate the, uh, uh, the substructure so that, the, uh, so that we don't lose the park. And uh, so uh, uh, we have a, a, a different uh, team from engineering uh, headed by uh, Eric Linsalata and uh, Gabrielle Zernick who will take you through this presentation, uh, which please bear with us. It is, uh, it is much longer than the one you just saw, uh, but uh, uh, that's because of the complexity of, uh, of, of this particular project. Um, uh, and this, this project is, uh, is funded uh, by the mayor. Uh, so I, is, um, 
uh, does Gabrielle have uh, permission to share the screen? Uh, I think so. I'm about to try it. Okay. And and don't worry, everybody. It's it's not that scary. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll break just, it down uh, for you. And, uh, and for the committee, sorry for the committee's background and the minute taker. Um, Gabrielle is Waterfront Structures Structures Project Manager with the NYC Parks. Correct. Yes. Go ahead. And uh, she reports to this other guy, Eric Linsalata, who is another one of our uh, deputy uh, directors for engineering in our capital division. Uh, it's not allowing me to go in presentation view. Uh, it would be full screen. Um, yeah, I'm trying that option on the bottom right and it's not going. Any other suggestions for the slideshow view? Uh, let me check. If not, I could try to maximize it. Gabrielle, something that might work is maybe PDFing it and then showing that. Okay, I have a PDF version, so I can try that instead. Yeah. How's that? That works. Okay, um, yeah, uh, some of the uh, images came out a little bit grainy on the PDF. So if anything needs clarification, um, please stop me and, and ask. Um, but as Steve mentioned, uh, this is an overview of the waterfront infrastructure re rehab project that we'll have going on at Glick Park. Glick Park, um, as many of you know, is located between East 36 and East 38th Street on the East River. Um, and the site budget for this project is $14.21 million. That is mayoral funding. The goal of this project is to bring the waterfront structure up to a state of good repair and extend the service life of the facility for continued use with minimal maintenance. What this means is that we're trying to address any structural problem, problems with the overall park um, in order to ensure uh, continued safe use of the structure. Uh, so this is just an overview of the location, uh, once again, uh, at between 36th and 38th Street along the East River. Um, whenever we're doing waterfront infrastructure or any park really, we look at whether or not it's in the flood zone. Being right on the water, we typically are falling in the flood zone. Uh, this is the land use in the area. And these are some of our neighboring parks nearby. So just to go through a couple photos, um, these are two views of the top side of the structure. So if you've been to the park, you may be familiar with, uh, with what this looks like. So on the left, we have the Esplanade looking towards the south. And uh, on the picture and the photo on the right, we have a look at the bulkhead on the water side and also uh, the north side of this structure. Um, to the left here, you see the existing hardscape. Uh, so we have some trees and, uh, and seating uh, area and a walkway. And then on the right, you see a photo of the existing waterside view. Here we have um, one of the problems that we're having in this park is that uh, some sinkholes are forming in our vegeta vegetation areas. And so that's one of our structural concerns and we'll get into a little bit more of that uh, later in the presentation. Um, and these are some exercise stations located in the park that are near the sinkhole that has formed. Whenever we're doing a project, uh, we do a tree inventory um, just to kind of see what the condition of the trees are. Um, the trees in this area are pretty good and we don't plan on touching them with this project. Uh, so just a general overview, this is kind of an aerial view of the structure uh, located within the box area. Uh, some of the problems that we've been seeing with the structure is minor to severe damages to the seawall. Uh, we also have minor to severe damages to the piles and under deck and we have under deck deteriorations. Um, all this we'll dive a little bit deeper into in later slides. And uh, as mentioned before, we have the sinkhole at the south edge of the park. Just for project history, um, we've done structural underwater inspections. That's where we collect kind of um, a little more of like a broad brush view of what our structures are, look like throughout the city. So this was inspected in 2013. It was inspected again in 2018 by EDC as part of our waterfront management um, pro inspection program. And in 2020, when we took on this project, we did a design level inspection. The design level inspection means that rather than just kind of a cursory look at the whole structure, we're actually going in and looking at every single pile, every piece of the structure to see what it would take to bring this stru uh, structure up to a state of good repair. Uh, additionally, a project had been completed here in 2019 to replace some lighting that was damaged by Sandy. 
Um, so this is kind of another bird's eye view of the structure. And if you were to remove what's on top of the structure, you would see what's underneath. So underneath the structure, we actually have piles in the water. And on top of those piles is a concrete deck, which supports the park that you see when you're walking um, through, the, through the park. Um, we, what, and like I said, with the design level inspection, what we do is we go through and we inspect every piece of the structure. So as you can see, uh, the piece of the structure are marked with different colors based on what condition that piece of the structure is currently in. So the overall condition rating for the structure is poor. The structural elements in general are in poor condition. We also have some pieces of structure that are in more advanced conditions like severe condition, as you can see from the images here. Some of our piles might be splitting um, or missing components of it. So the structure is not quite sitting on a support in those locations. Additionally, we see damages along the front of the seawall and um, different areas with the concrete you can see here. On the top side, we don't actually have much notable damage except for the one sinkhole on the south side. So we looked at a couple of different alternatives for what we could do in this park. And um, we, we looked at five in total. So just to kind of overview what we were looking at um, in order to repair the structure is here we have alternative one and two. So for us, alternative one, alternative, alternative one meant that we were doing critical elemental repairs, which is we were, were planning to address any of the severe or advanced deterioration within the structure. Um, for alternative two, we were looking at doing full elemental repair. So not only would we repair anything that is in severe or advanced condition, but we would wrap anything that doesn't have much damage at all in order to prevent it from future deterioration. Along with those two alternatives, another thing that we can do is actually encase some of the piles. What we would do is we essentially pour a big block of concrete that wraps around the piles in the backside of the section. As you can see here, it gets a little bit shallow towards the backside and we can't actually access it for construction. So the way that we would do that is encase the piles to protect them from further damage. Um, so the repairs that we're talking about here uh, range from pile repairs, which you can see the timber piles in this cross section. This, is, this section is as if you were to cut the, sec the park in half and kind of look at it from the inside, this is what you would see. So we have the timber piles here um, under deck repairs is if you look just above the piles, there's a concrete section. And if there's any damage there, that's what we're measuring and looking at to repair. The seawall repairs are the front face towards the water side, any damage to the concrete. And the sheet pile, if you look towards the back end of the section away from the water side, there's a, a steel piece going up and down. That's actually like a steel wall that goes along the back side. So we, look, uh, we inspected that area to see if there was any damage to the sheet pile as well. So Again, as mentioned in alternative one, uh, we're looking at repairing any of the critical, critically damaged sections of this park. So what that means is any of the piles that are in severe or advanced condition, what we would do is come in and encase that pile in order to restore its capacity to support the structure. And then we would wrap it to prevent any future, future damage. So as of now, our design estimate is 136 piles that we would be addressing with this repair. For under deck repairs, um, there are sections of the deck where it's like two pieces are coming to meet one another. So that we call that a joint. And if it's damaging where the joint is, so the concrete is falling away, we would go back and repair that concrete in order to um, restore the bearing of, that, of the deck on top of the piles. For the seawall, anywhere we have um, like major spalling, spalling is when concrete is falling away from the face of the structure. We don't necessarily, the pile underneath isn't able to support the wall because there's no connection once that concrete is missing. So we would go in and replace that concrete. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, that steel sheet pile bulkhead in the back, um, some of it does have holes in it. And we think that the sinkhole that we see in the south is forming because the soil in that section is seeping out through these holes in the steel sheet pile. So we would go back and we would install some sort of wall behind that in order to decrease the soil loss. So alternative two, what we were looking at is adding the additional non-critical repairs. So the piles that are still in good condition that, you know, there isn't much section loss to them, we would wrap those in order to protect them for, from any future deterioration. On the seawall, if there's any spalling that's not quite as serious, um, we would try to address that as well. Oops, sorry. Um, and uh, and that, would, that alternative would also include all of the critical repairs from alternative one. 
So this is kind of a comparison looking between alternative one and alternative two. So you can kind of see the difference in between the cost of the two, um, the two alternatives and also um, the life cycle and what sort of future repair that would require. So again, with alternative two, um, we're doing a little bit more of um, like a complete project here, but with alternative one, we are addressing everything that is needed in order for the park to remain open as it is um, at this time. So as a comparison here, you can see the difference between um, the red symbols and the blue symbols. So you could see the difference between the, the two repairs that we would have. It's just, uh, again, if you were to look underneath the structure, this is where all the repairs are happening. As mentioned before, we also have an interim mass encasement um, option that we could add to each of these alternatives. Again, that means that we're basically just setting a concrete block around all of these piles in the back in order to protect them long-term and um, basically just address any issues that we can't access because of um, just the, the height there is just so minimal that we can't actually send back workers in order to do that work. So um, as mentioned, this mass encasement can be added to either alternative one or alternative two um, and just be a part of that full package. <clears throat> the last alternative that we did look at was an entire replacement of the platform. Um, this one is it quite far exceeds our budget and may not be the, the most cost-effective way of us spending um, parks money. So just another overview, if you were to cut the, sec the new section in half, this is what you would see when you looked at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so after we did, after we looked at all the alternatives and what they meant for our budget, we determined that alternative 1A was the most appropriate solution for this park. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we weighed different options, or we weighed different um, aspects of each design when we were looking at this, and we had to fit into our total project cost here. So the price that you see is the capital cost, and additionally, because of the mass encasement that we would do in the back, we have to do mitigation offset. So any fill that we add into the water, we have to do a mitigation repair elsewhere in the city in order to account for that, and that's where the additional costs come from. So... Uh, this is an overview of our recommended alternative, as we mentioned. Um, you know, we would have the mass encasement, we would be addressing any of the severe to advanced conditions, and any future work that would need to come in to address the piles that are right now in minor or moderate condition would be much easier for them to come in and actually do that work. So the pros for this, um, we're coming in under budget, the park will be able to remain open during construction. <coughs> Excuse me. The cons is that um, we would need to do some future work at some, at some point to address all the other piles when they start to deteriorate further. And additionally, we have the mitigation costs that we need to deal with. So the next steps for us, um, the mitigation uh, is a big part for us. We have to coordinate that for an offsite area where we are able to um, take care of a wetland in order to make up for the fill that we're adding to the um, waterway. And so what we need to do with that is coordinate with our in-house group in order to identify a site and then bring that to the Department of Environmental Conservation to develop a plan and get a permit for that project. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Thank you very much, Gabrielle. I believe we do, our first question is going to be from Marty Barrett, committee member. Marty? Yeah, uh, this is great. Uh, the park certainly needs it, but the, I, <clears throat> clearly there's nothing being planned for uh, above ground. Uh, th there had always been issues in regards to the lighting in the park. There had been issues in regards to um, the availability of water for the fountains. I gather none of this is being taken into consideration in this project. Um, right now, what we're doing is uh this project is focused on the structural repairs in order to keep the park open and functional for the indefinite uh, future. Um, those additional uh, projects don't quite fit into this budget. Um, I think uh, perhaps you, Simon, or someone else could speak mm -hmm. more to if there are any sort of future contracts that may be considering that, but this contract will be focusing entirely on what's going on underwater. Yeah, and this is Eric Linsalata. I'd also add that the, the lighting should all be repaired at this point. It was damaged during Hurricane Sandy. And that project, I think, wrapped up over a year ago to, to repair all the lighting after getting a, a FEMA grant to do it. Um, so if the lighting is still not working at night, um, we would love to hear that because that means we need to 
go after that contractor for his warranty. Um, with regard to the fountain, that's something that we, we discussed um, since this uh, funding came out of the citywide state of good repair um, program. It really isn't supposed to do things to um, on the top side, basically. So we're, we're supposed to be focused on the structure. Uh, the good news is that with these waterfront structures, once we do the structural rehab, that makes all the rest of the projects possible. And then we can, we can work with our, you know, our usual capital process with our landscape architects to design the, uh, the rehabilitations, the improvements of the park. And I know that the water fountain, the fountains are uh, one of the things that have been um, uh, one of those requests that have been out there that hopefully one day we'll get funded and get to work on. The name of the park, tr it really isn't Glick Park. It's, it has always, it, Glick Park was kind of the uh, added name since Glick had put in the uh, original dollars for maintenance. It was supposed to be called East River Esplanade Park. Okay. Uh, and I don't know why yeah. the city isn't uh, referring to it as such. Well, you know something, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy that you brought this up because uh, I have been trying to track down the uh, derivation of the name and, and why it, it's being called Glick Park and whether there's some kind of uh, legal obligation on our part uh, to, uh, to have the Glick name attached to it. No, there is not. Uh, in uh, When Glick put up the building that's next to it on 34th Street, which uh, n now they've uh, done a number to the front of the, uh, the, the fronting that's on First Avenue, which used to be a park, and now they put a structure there, which I don't understand. We, we worked endlessly in design of that area, uh, on 34th Street, but anyway, uh, in putting up the in in the development of the park uh, and and the building, Glick put up a half a million dollars towards maintenance of the park, which kind of disappeared in the uh, Parks Department's budget or in the general budget. But nonetheless, the um, the the name Glick was just in, was added kind of as a reference to that, but it was never named uh, officially Glick Park. It, uh, the official name was the East River Esplanade Park. Well, I... Uh, and so this is going back 30 years. Yes, Steve, signage, we're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> I, I, uh, and all the signage, Steve, I think the signage does reflect what Marty's saying, right? It doesn't say well, we're done. Well, we, we, we get, we're on the... I've been holding up actually the uh, printing of new signs because I've been trying to figure out what what the proper name should be. Uh, so uh, I just have to check one more file, uh, but I suspect uh, uh, that uh, we're, we're going to be printing probably names. We're probably going to print a sign that just says he's for astronaut. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad you brought this up. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you, Marty, for that history. I think we need to, if that's truly the case and Glick doesn't have any contractual obligation, yeah. we right. can, uh, yeah, or, then, you know. And there's no reason to have the name uh, uh, in such a way. Absolutely, thank you. That was very helpful. Uh, I will mention, um, I know that uh, Steve, you had mentioned Molly Hollister. <laughs> Uh, she was not able to make uh, this meeting tonight, but I know that some of her colleagues um, we have a note from that are very interested in this, as you could well imagine. Um, certainly, if anybody there would like to speak, I know uh, Sandy McKee is on board. Um, certainly, Brendan, we should give Sandy or anyone she designates the floor to ask any questions at this time. I also see that Jeannie has her hand raised. Yes, Jeannie, go ahead. Oh. Sorry, I just wanted to, Sandy had listed her questions in the Q&A, so I didn't know if she wanted to oh, speak okay. them all. Yeah, so I don't know, if, Sandy, if you wanted to speak them or you, would you rather just be read them off in Q&A or, or Kevin? Um, you know what, I, I'm always a proponent of giving somebody the floor to speak in case uh, they wanted to add anything that's not in their scripted question, not scripted, but written question. Oh. If we can give Sandy the floor, if you don't want it, we're, we're happy, Sandy, to read your questions. Uh, I do not see them, uh, Jeannie can, so. Thank you, Kevin, I've already been unmuted. Um, I'm oh. wondering if 
sea level rise is being taken into consideration and is there actually a limit to the lifespan of this park? Um, we design our waterfront structures to meet flood loads. Uh, the, you may be thinking of other, project, uh, other parks where we're doing certain projects to address sea level rise. Uh, within this two block area, there's not much that we can do without affecting well beyond the boundaries of the park. Um, so at this point, uh, what we can do is keep the structure open and available for use. Um, and additionally, addressing something like that uh, would require a lot more budget than we have available for this project at this time. I mean, I notice it's only 6.3 feet above the mean water level. so. It will be flooded eventually, I guess, is what you're saying. Yes. Yes, yes if uh, where sea level continues to rise as projected, uh, this park and others will be in trouble for sure. And the sinkhole is actually visible on the surface of the park. Will that be dealt with? Yes, so as mentioned in the presentation, any we think that the sinkhole has to do with holes that are in that steel sheet pile towards the back of the structure. We're patching those holes with this construction and then the sinkhole will be filled after we patch the hole. So the park will be closed for some period of time while that's being while that work is being done? Only where the sinkhole is, the rest of the park would be open. Thank you. And right now the handrail, for instance, along the seawall is in very bad condition and there's a lot of openings in it. Is that going to be repaired as part of this work as well? That's not something that we're able to do within this contract. We're only addressing the underside of the structure underwater. We don't have the funding within this contract to address that. So um, I would say that, you know, simultaneously with this to maintain this park, um, you know, one, we need water to water the plants or it's not going to be, it, it's not going to survive as a park, but also to fix some of these other elements that are, are really a problem. I would say we don't need water for the fountains because we, there are actually plants growing in those fountains now, but we certainly need water to water the plants. Um, so it, it, even if we are going ahead with the structural repairs without these other fundamental repairs, it seems a real shame. Is there any way that we can get those addressed or looked at simultaneously? Um, that would require funding that's beyond the budget that we have. Uh, without us doing these structural repairs, we can't even consider repairs like that. So this is something that we need to prioritize any, over any of those topside fixes. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like we're going to have to develop a plan to do a uh, uh, to do another capital project on top of this one to deal with the topside improvements. Um, so uh, um, um, it would be good if uh, the community board uh, would include this uh, in your uh, in your um, I guess your FY, FY22 uh, budget request, and uh, we can probably uh, look to get funding maybe from the council member or the borough president and put together a plan for the, for the next budget uh, cycle. That would, be, that would be great because it really does need some um, loving care. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but but as, as Gabrielle pointed out though, unless we fix the underlying problem with the structure, uh, then we have no park to talk about at all. So uh, uh, the priority uh, was to deal with the uh, uh, with the structural issue first, and uh, and we, we can we can look at the top side as you know uh, also. And it's great to hear that the park will not be closed. Um, it's really heavily used, especially yeah. now, um, you know, post COVID during COVID, it's been used a lot. No, so uh, yeah, again, as Gabriel said, only the uh, only the section where the uh, where the sinkhole is located. I mean, the uh, on the plus side, the fact that we're doing just the substructural work means that it's all under the surface and the top side is not affected. Great. Thanks, Kevin. That's Those were the questions that I had. No, thank, thank you, Sandy. I know that um, you and Molly and others are taking a very close look at this for a long time. So I want to make sure that we um, take everything that you have to say in consideration. Um, if that's... It, uh, I guess I'll pose the same question to Steve that I did before, if you're looking or need the committee for any further action. Um, Gabrielle mentioned next steps. How about next steps that you see for uh, the community board? Uh, well, this is in the same category, basically, as the other project. It's also uh, um, a replacement in kind, based, you know, uh, we're not making any uh, 
substantial changes to the top side that would trigger a, a review by the Public Design Commission. Uh, so again, we don't we don't need a resolution from the board, but we certainly would like to have one. So uh, again, uh, the the option is up to you. Um, uh, we, you know, we would we would appreciate having a resolution, but if if uh, you know you know it's up it's up to you. Understood. Um, I can open. And, and, and I want I want to make one other point uh, uh, with respect to uh, the timing. Uh, be, uh, it's uh, because of the next steps that are required for this project and the fact that we ha also have to come up with a, a mitigation plan and have to have it reviewed by the State Department of, of Environmental Conservation. The timing here is somewhat unpredictable. It's, uh, you know, the, uh, it's difficult to say how long that process will take. Uh, and, uh, and so it's not gonna be as quick um, if you wanna call the Peter Detmold uh, project quick. Uh, but uh, it, it will not be on the same uh, uh, timeline as the Peter Detmold project. We'll keep you posted on how we're doing on this one, uh, but it will take it will take longer to uh, uh, to get it uh, to get it started. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, we um, I open up to the floor if any committee members would like to make any uh, statements or further action on this. Um, it seems like we do have time, as Steve had mentioned if need be, to address it uh, at a later date if we so choose. Uh, I am not seeing any raised hands. Um, let me just double check. No, I do. Jeannie D'Onofrio, you have the floor. Yes, hi. Um, there are more in the Q&A um, box. Uh, so just a comment from, San from Sandy. I I Sandra, I should have mentioned that Molly and I are, on, are from the Alliance for Kips Bay. I don't know if she's mentioned that. Yeah, I think I just mentioned that. Did I mention the name correctly? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. And then there's a, okay, good. There's another message um, from Christos, uh, a question. Does the area outside the ferry and the area under the FDR where the city bikes are located fall within the top side areas that can be addressed with additional funding? These areas need TLC and regular sanitation attention. Um, I, I, I don't know that those are parks, um, uh, properties, uh, Wes, um, Wes, are those areas a part of our, uh, part of our property list? No, unfortunately, uh, as far as from our, from our parks maps, uh, parkland maps that I've looked into, uh, that area where, where the ferry is and where the city bikes are, are not parks property. Uh, our property begins at the gate of, uh, for lack of a better term, the click or, or the Esplanade Park right there at the right iron fence gates. And then also the entry coming in underneath the FDR at 37th Street is our property. And then the Glick area itself is our property. But beyond that is not shown as parkland property. All right. Um, so I guess the answer to the question, unfortunately, is a no. Um, we would be looking only strictly speaking, uh, probably at the, uh, at what we now call Glick Park, but maybe as of tomorrow, we're going to call it just East River Esplanade. Uh, but, uh, it's not, um, we, we, we have a, a limit to our property line. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we can move on. We do, uh, uh Steve and the rest of the parks, if you, uh, uh, can stick with us, whoever needs to. Um, we have two more items. Um, I know it's late. This is our last meeting until September, so I appreciate uh, the patience. Um, the last two items are um, both park related. Um, the item number six is the discussion of public accessibility of St. Barton Park Garden. Um, let me bring you back. Our last committee meeting, we heard from some re residents about St. Barton Garden being in inaccessible to the public because the Parks Department and the private preschool there have exclusive access. Uh, the statements raised about the garden at the May 4th committee meeting uh, include, and I'll fire off five. One, the general public does not benefit from the exclusive use of the public garden by the private park sponsored preschool based at the park, nor by the garden's exclusion from the park redesign. Number two, repeated appeals to parks from PS 116 and PS 261 parent leaders and other members of the public 
to make the garden more accessible to the public have not elicited change. Next, the garden is not open to the general public during the hours and days when the preschool is not in session. According to the preschool director, she has the power to determine who can be invited to use the garden during the school's downtime. That was a conversation I had with that director. In online outlets for the preschool, including on social media and the preschool website, the business promotes the school's, quote, pristine private garden, unquote, in its status as, quote, a private, affordable, nurturing preschool for ages 18 months to six years, where parents attend with their children, unquote. Now, the school, uh, only allows a small number of children. This is the last point that was made at the meeting. The school only allows a small number of children to be members of the preschool each year. And because of the requirement that parents be with their children during school hours, many working parents cannot enroll their children. Now this matter is also time sensitive as noted in last month's full community board meeting because the city is trying to find sites for public preschools as part of this expanded universal pre-K. The city now plans to add up to 16,500 seats for three-year-olds in the 2021 to 2022 school year. Um, I, can, I know there are some uh, community members on board that, that do wanna ask questions, but I'll open it up by asking some simple factual based questions. Number one is, can Parks let us know when the term of this deal expires, if there is an expiration date? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by a deal. What 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 is what do you well, mean? Well, I know that it's been what 20 years since they have started the preschool. Is this what type of arrangement is this? It will be ongoing until uh, eternity, or until what trigger point happens, if any? Well, I mean, it's it's a misnomer to, to refer to it as a private preschool. Uh, it's it's a, a parks department activity. It's a it's a parks department program. Um, so um, um, I do believe that the program is undergoing uh, some uh, change. And I'm, uh, uh, un unfortunately, I'm not prepared tonight to speak to what that change might be. Uh, but um, uh, th there is um, uh, the, the management of the program, as well as maybe the program itself, will be under, uh, I'm under the impression, is undergoing some change. It's, it's uh, operated through our recreation division. Uh, so I'm not directly involved in it. Uh, but um, I can uh, um, I can certainly try to find out and get back to you. Thank you. I just know that the regards to the private preschool, that's because um, that's how the school itself and its um, digital outlets refers to itself as a private preschool in their private garden. Um, well, that, that, that's I'm, really, that, I'm, I'm glad you're pointing that out because it's uh, that's absolutely uh, that's absolutely false. That's not the case. Yeah, if you take a look, for example, this is just one example, their Instagram account, it is, uh, they do discuss their, their private garden and other places, their private free school. Um, I do, um, Jeannie, I want you to see, I think that we may have questions on this, so feel free to interrupt me um, if you have any. Okay, so you want me to, there's one question right now, do, would you want me, do you want me to read that off to you now? Um, yes, if you could read the name again for the minutes that you have, um, and then um, who would, the name of the questioner the question, and the question yeah. comment. Erica writes, is Stephanie a Parks Department employee? Um, I know Erica's involved with this. Um, can you just give Erica the floor for a minute, please? Because um, I want to make sure that, again, her concerns are, have been met. Um, is this um, Erica, last name, Wolf? Correct. Begins with I can't read it, but it looks Erica W. Yes, I believe it's Erica Wolf. Erica, if you um, don't mind uh, to take the floor on this, uh, I want to make sure that that I know you've been outspoken about this, that um, you've been heard. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say something to Steve to thank you for being on this call because we banded a lot of people together to be on this with us. Um, so that I was asking that question because the way you just formed, um, you know, the, what you just said, I didn't realize any of that. I thought it was a private preschool, which d doesn't make any of this feel any better. But does Stephanie work for the Parks Department? Does that mean is she, you know, assu assuming all of that is the case? Um, yes, yes she, she is a Parks Department employee. 
So she's paid by, I, did, I don't know if anybody else who's listening right now knew that. I, ne- I never knew that. Um, and I know you, know, you know, I mean, we've talked about this a couple of times. We've been talking about this since November, 2019. And you say there are going to be changes. Is this changes as of September? Or is it something that the public can get access to over the summer? When the school is never, at my understanding, ever in session anyway. Uh, well, the, the changes to the preschool, I need to get back to you on. I'm not, uh, I'm not fully versed in, and I haven't been fully briefed on, on what's, uh, I, I know that we're, I've been told that uh, we are contemplating changes there, but I, I'm not, I'm not fully conversant uh, right now with what they are. But she has never run the program in the summer regardless, correct? I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Okay. But uh, I don't, I don't, um, I don't expect her to be there during the summer, whether there's a program or not. So can the public use the par- the garden in the summer if she's not there? Well, I, I, I tell you, Commissioner Castro, um, my boss has, has visited there and has taken a look at it. And uh, he is reluctant to just open it up to uh, the general public. Um, uh, you, know, for, um, you know, there are flower beds all around it and uh, yeah, I think his concern is that the plant they would not survive. They would be, uh, uh, but um, but if, if you're if you're to, if you're talking about, um, I, I uh, 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 Kevin mentioned earlier that uh, school groups uh, were wanted to go in there. If there were supervised groups uh, that wanted to uh, uh, go into the garden, that may be uh, that may be something we can work out, which I would be uh, willing to uh, discuss with him. Yeah, that's so I- one. I'm oh, sorry, Eric. I was just saying that's wonderful. And I think Erica's point too, if that happens, can, can there be a friends of group, for example, that can help? I'm not holding anybody to anything, um, but, um, or if we could find some funds for um, workers to help keep that or to open up the park during um, non-school hours, um, keeping in mind that it would have to, you know, make sure to be cleaned up and everything. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, the key to it is having some kind of uh, of supervision, and if we had staff on on hand, that would certainly make it more workable. So I, yeah, and I don't want to speak for everyone else because there is a concern in the group. Um, and Kevin, I appreciate you saying you're not going to hold anybody to it. That we would have to, if we if we fought hard enough to open it, we then have to take care of it. And I cannot speak for everybody, but personally, I don't. I the flowers are beautiful, but if you open it up to the public and it was just grass, I personally would be just as happy with that. Um, I do appreciate the offer to let schools go in there. And uh, to that end, at the moment, that might seem like the, that might be the least barrier to entry. We'd love to know as soon as possible how we would be able to do something like that. But also, again, you know, she's not going to use it over the summer if we could use it. Um, and Kevin, other people are going to have questions about this. I just, Steve, really quickly, I, you said that um, William Castro visited. Do you know what's going on with the bathroom? Um, and, and I haven't been to St. Martin in about a week, so I don't know. Um, the bathroom, and then somebody else said there was a there was caution tape put up in the playground today, and they asked me to find out what that was about. So, All right, well, uh, that would be a question for Wes Hamilton. Yeah, we can save that for uh, the parks report, which is the, the next and last agenda item. All right. Okay, and definitely go back to the garden. I'm sorry, I probably spoke out of turn. <laughs> That's okay. If there's any other garden issues, and, and I also, Jeannie, if there's any garden-related um, comments or questions. That I have, you have. Uh, five more um, in the Q&A. Uh, the the next one is from David. Name. The next one is from David Saul, a Saul, S-A-L-L. Um, the question is, this is a prepaid school program, so how is the park, how is this a parks program? Do the proceeds go to New York City Parks? Um, well, I, I would have to double check. Most likely, uh, uh, most likely the fees go into the city uh, general fund. Uh, but most of um, most of the fees we collect uh, do not go into the Parks Department budget directly. Uh, they go to the city general fund. Okay. I want to have some parity here. Um, if uh, David Saul can have the floor and just fire off his his last questions, Jeannie, if that's appropriate. I'm not appropriate, but if 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 he'd like to, I'd like to get that done. Um, David, do you have the floor? Do we have the ability to do that? If not, um, then uh, Jeannie we can. Have, we have more questions. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you are, David. Go ahead. And I just wanted to point out, and I think a lot of people realize this that. 
um, Erica Wolf, David Saul, um, and certainly others really led an effort to get a huge cleanup uh, event happen on Earth Day at St. Martin Park, a huge success. So we appreciate their continued support um, for the community and especially for environmental and park related issues. Again, on behalf of the committee, thank you. Go hey, ahead. Kevin, I, I appreciate you recognizing that because, you know, look, this, this really comes from a place of caring. Um, the, you know, we are a small representation of a huge community that's really been pushing very hard for this. Um, you know, I want to be respectful in my comments, but but I'm finding it very difficult to hear that we have so few answers still at this point. Um, this is not something that came up just from our last conversation. This is something that's been going on for many, many months. And I don't feel that we are going to get off this call and have any more clarity um, or any transparency as to what's going on. As far as this preschool program, it's a paid program. I sent my kids to it. Where that money goes, I think we should have real clarity um, ab about that. And, and, and I just don't see why this is not a park that's really serving the community at this point, especially when the school has been closed for so long and yet we still can't move on it. It feels like there's deeper politics here and I don't think that we're getting the full story. That's just my personal feeling. Thank you, David. Um, appreciate uh, being able to amplify your voice. Um, was there anything else question wise that you had put in chat or others that you'd like to uh, yeah, share? I, I mean, really at this point, I think that Erica vocalized it really well. I think it's, we'd love to get some real answers. Um, we're happy, Kevin, I think to, to, to share each of those questions. Um, just feeling a little cynical at this point that we're gonna get we're gonna get the answers that we need in order to have this park opened up. Well, I hear you, David. David I hear you, and this is a public forum. Um, this is uh, you know a verbatim transcript will be. So I think it's important to put those questions in cement. Cynicism uh, cynicism aside, um, I think it's still important for us to put it into the public record. So um, <laughs> you know if you can read them or Jeannie D'Onofrio can read them, I think this is certainly the forum to, to lay those down. Um, I'll let you or Jeannie figure out who wants to, to say them for the record. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know that we have a set. Uh, Erica, do we have a set set of questions that you want to ask around the park? Well, Jeannie had mentioned there were some from you, David, so I just wanted to make sure those were. No, that, that was it from David. I have other, I have oh, other comments and others. questions. Yeah. Okay, then David, thank you. Um, for that, I think it was expressed. I don't have to repeat uh, what I had said. I had a personal experience as well um, with Stephanie, um, where, well, we don't have to refer to it. It's on the uh, verbatim uh, YouTube video from, from the last meeting. Uh, go ahead um, with other questions, Jeannie, in the same situation, if we can give them the floor, if they so choose, or just to outright read their questions. Okay. Recognize that we are trying to move on to- All right, uh, thanks, Kevin. The next one is a comment from Emily Breitbart. Um, yes. I had inquired about the preschool for my children in the last two years and was given a pamphlet with tuition, race, et cetera. So that's a comment from Emily. Um, question. Emily. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kevin, you're gonna say something? No, I was just saying thank you to Emily. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Um, Erica, uh, let me see, two, a question, two couple of questions and a comment. First, Erica Rand Silverman. Uh, can we open up the garden to the public in the way that the East Village that the East Village does in their gardens? Um, I'll read one question at a time, so if you want to answer it that way. So can yeah. we open up the garden the, to the public the way the East Village does in, in their gardens? Um, again, quickly, if you can give Erica Rance of them in the floor, I wanted to see if this is a parks. I'm not familiar with which uh, garden um, this is. Would this be a parks garden that would be comparable to? Um, St. Vartan, um, Erica Ransilverman, if you're there, you can certainly speak to that. Hi, Kevin. Thanks so much for giving me the floor. It's a good question. I don't know, but when I lived in the East Village, there are so many wonderful gardens there that are open to the public. And they are, there are, you know, friends of groups that help to maintain them. I don't know if those gardens Steve might know if those gardens are city gardens or private gardens. I think they're city gardens, aren't they? Um, well, there's a, um, 
uh, th there are different uh, classifications. Some of them are uh, are parks department properties. Uh, some of them are owned maybe by uh, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how it breaks down in the East Village, but uh, in terms of citywide, uh, some of these community gardens are actually owned by uh, uh, the New York Restoration Project. I think maybe some might be owned by the Trust for Public Land. Uh, they, mm. they fall into different categories, but, but none of them, I mean, those are, um, I don't see them as being analogous to what we have at St. Martin. The, the, these, are, um, these are basically uh, um, uh, community gardens that are operated by uh, uh, by uh, community organizations. Uh, uh, they're, they're somewhat more developed than just friends groups. They have a legal responsibility. They sign agreements with uh, with us in many cases, and uh, uh, they're required to keep them open uh, uh, maybe 20 hours a week. And uh, they have to have staff there uh, uh, to open them during those hours for the most part. They don't just open the gates and let anybody in uh, uh, during those hours. And, uh, it's, uh, I don't... Um, well, they do open the gates and let people in because yeah, but, but they, but they've been they, in them many times, but there are people who are, they, they who are, are there. there. They, are, they are there. They're, right, so I guess they, that's the part that I was wondering. They, they, are, the, they are caretakers and have responsibility for, uh, for maintaining those gardens, so they... Uh, uh, they have they have, they assign people or work it out uh, in a cooperative way so that people are uh, people are on hand when uh, the gates are open for the general public. It's just so strange that we have a public. You know the the garden in our neighborhood is public and yet we can't access it. Yeah, I, I... and these ones in the East Village um, are technically not. I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, I, I think... can go all the way down there and access it. Uh, but Kevin, I just wanted to say one other thing, if it's okay. And I know that go we ahead. have to move on. No, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share a story. And this is, this is a true story. So it's no secret that I've been asking about this garden for years, not just months, but years. Um, but when the weather turned nice a few weeks ago, I was wa and when the, when the turf was closed, we, we had to walk down to First Avenue to enter the park. Normally we enter um, through the turf area. Uh, but so we were all the way down to First and we were entering in, which means that we passed right by the garden, which we don't normally do. Uh, and my eight-year-old uh, was looking in. It's really beautiful. I give Stephanie that. She's done an incredible job with it. And there were people picnicking, not like on a blanket, but they were, you know, eating and sitting in a circle and hanging out. Uh, and my son said to me, oh my God, how do we get in there? And I was like, N -n we, we can't. It's just, it's like it's just so wrong you know something is just really amiss when yeah it was mentioned to me th thank you thank you for for sharing that it was mentioned to me that uh, and we've we've you know certainly had um some dialogue um regarding gramercy park and i understand uh, i've read the original deed uh Mezraj and others have and and understand it's a private park but even they open up well during during non-pandemic years anyway even they open up uh, for a bit every year for, in their case, Christmas carols. So the fact is you're, you've got a private park opening it up at least for a short period. And then you have exactly St. Martin that's not open at all. Um, so thank you for that, Jeannie. I'm gonna throw it back to you and see if there's anything else you feel needs to be. Sure, there, there are quite a few more. Um, the next one is from Erica Rand Silverman. Well, that's, uh, uh, that's with just, Erica just yep. spoke, so. We have, a, yep, another one. So it's, uh, can we have a, can we have a recreational representative at a CB6 meeting so we can learn more? Uh, CB6 meeting? Well, this is a CB6 meeting. Um, I'm not sure how that. A, rec a, rec a, rec a recreational representative. Am I still unmuted? Oh, yeah. yeah so always, what I mean is, is, just so you know, um, Erica, Wesley Hamilton is here and he's usually always here. Um, in fact, I don't think uh, he's missed a meeting yet. Um, he, has a, he has a parks report coming up. So there was always a parks and recreation uh, representative on this call. Okay, was, because Steve mentioned earlier that he couldn't speak to it because it's run by the recreation committee because that the preschool falls under. Uh, I thought you meant a general sense. Sorry, you mean for particularly we're still in the garden, which I appreciate. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. So I was just wondering if we could plan in advance to actually have a recreational 
representative at the meeting so that we could talk to the person who, who presumably knows more? Uh, that might be a good idea. I will talk to them about that. That would be great. Okay, okay. Could I, thank you. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. I thought it was more general, Erica. Thank you. Uh, could, uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to the next one. I'm yeah. sorry. What, what, oh, Steve, Steve, go ahead. The, the, the woman who spoke, uh, Erica, when, when you walked by the garden and saw people inside picnicking, yeah. It was was the gate open? Do, you, do we know how they got in there? Well, they were with Stephanie. Oh. So I didn't go to look because I just assumed um, there were people like gardening. Um, it looked like some like young adults. And then there were about three or four adults who were sitting around in a circle. And, and that's where the, as I mentioned in the last meeting, again, I don't have to go into detail, but um, I happened to walk by on Earth Day. The gate was cracked open. I started walking in. I thought how wonderful on Earth Day that they decided to open the garden. Stephanie happened to be there. She came to me and told me that the public is is not uh, welcome, but there was a girl there jumping around. And I said, well, is it this a member of the public? She said, no, uh, I invited her personally to do her gymnastics routine here. She needed a lot of space to do her routine. So these are the type of, as you can imagine, um, uh, things that can be really grating for a lot of residents who wish they had access. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, Erica, uh, what, what, when was this? Do you, do you know that? It was, I mean, I would, what are we in? We're in June. I would say it was probably like mid-May. It was right as the weather started to turn. I want to say, okay, here, Steve, it was, the turf was not yet open because I was walking to First Avenue. So it was at some point when the blacktop was still closed. All right. so, and I think it was right at the tail end of that. But I, I have to say, I shared this story with a couple of neighbor friends um, out of frustration. Um, and, and they were, this is not, this is, and they sort of laughed at me because they often come from First Ave and they mentioned that this is not an unusual occurrence. This happens often, apparently. And, and, and by the way, I just, I, thank you. And I wanted to point out that my conversation with Stephanie was actually very pleasant. The entire conversation was pleasant. Um, so, I, it, But it did strike me as strange when she, again, and I mentioned this before, she added that, well, this is my private garden and I get to decide who to invite. Again, not said in a confrontational tone. It was a very, very nice conversation, but it was almost like, there was a lack of self-awareness on how grading that could sound. Right, so, well, so. I, um... so I just, uh, yeah. Jeannie, I know we're, you know, we're going on. We may have to, if it's, okay. a, if it's repetitive type questions, we can move on to the parks department. But again, I did want to give at least an opportunity to at least uh, have any angle that people have on the garden questions sure. asked. This would be the forum to do it. Go ahead. Yeah, I think a couple of my will be will be redundant, but the next one is a statement. It's from Heather Turk. Um, it's a park. Why do we need this tiny corner so coddled? Parks department should help with this spot too if it opens up. I am grateful for all your work. So that's a comment. Uh, no feedback necessary on that one. Okay. Um, I this I think we already answered this one earlier. For, this is a question from Courtney Nathanson. Does any of the tuition does any part of the tuition go to supporting the garden? I believe we don't know the answer to that one. So right, I think uh, that's uh, correct on that one. The, the answer uh, almost, uh, yeah. almost definitely is no. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and, and I know, you know, look, a lot of this is not, you know, again, there's a concern about, you know, the sort of the volume. I, I think part of the direction, like I mentioned, is just looking out for the public preschools since the, uh, you know, 16,500 new seats are coming up. I, I know Eric is co-president of the uh, PS116 PTA executive board. And I think she also doesn't just speak for herself. I think she speaks for a lot of PS116 families who see other kids in that garden and think chaperoned or not, maybe they're chaperoned, but it'd be wonderful for some of the public school kids, I think is the is what I'm hearing from a lot of people. Did I capture that, Erica? Yes, yes, that's absolutely true. There's this is this is the talk of the playground. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are wondering, I mean, a lot of people are wondering where, I just put this question is, where does the funding for the garden come from? 
Is that from the city parks department? Um, it's just also, it's, I just don't see how it could go on much longer. I mean, I think for a long time, people, you know, families were not paying attention, but we have a highly, highly engaged community, really wonderful people who do so much work and who love to gather and who, and who live here and are raising their children here. And, and I think in the same way that Stephanie was when she, you know, you know, began when her kids were young, but now it's almost like, yeah, I mean, I've said it, but I think just now that same sort of engagement and passion for the neighborhood and the community is within the families who are in that park every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you to David. Thank you to the other Erica. Thank you to everyone um, who, who um, voiced it. Look, the job of this uh, committee, any committee on community board six is to amplify the voices of the residents and those who engage with the community. Um, uh, David, I can, I could sense, uh, not just sense, I heard it from you, the cynicism. And, and I know that's not where you want to be um, emotionally. And, but I do appreciate, um, and I hope that we as a committee at least have um, given you a platform to share that voice and hopefully even move the needle in the direction that you feel and your colleagues uh, feel that it needs to go. Um, Kevin, so with there's, that, Kevin, there's I, quite a few more um, comments and oh, questions. Yeah, but I, I, due to timing, do you, is there another way to go yeah, through are, this? Like are they repetitive? And let's do this while I'm waiting. Uh, Marty Barrett has his hand up. So Marty, go ahead. But I would like to wrap it up. Um, yes. Unless we, you we feel should, we should a, ask the Parks Department Recreation Area for their project plan as to what this was supposed to be. It, it may have evolved into this uh, private paying uh, 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 school or whatever, but in fact, it may have originally, uh, in as far as the Parks Department, been just a program for the community, which would mean that they're not doing what they planned on doing. And that the change to how Stephanie is running this uh, may not exactly jive with what the Parks Department uh, thinks it should be. And again, thank you, Marty. A again, it's a question a lot of people raise is we're not saying close it down uh, not immediately. We're saying, how come we can't have like a Sunday afternoon where it's open? How come we can't have you know, days when school's not in session? Um, you know, it, uh, Stephanie told me that it will never be open to the public because Bloomberg has her back. That's a direct quote, you know, and I don't think he's mayor anymore, but now I'm being cynical and I hate to be cynical. I hate it. Um, so let's, uh, Stephanie, uh, uh, is, you know, she feels it's her place. Um, uh, Jeannie, is there any other questions that aren't, if they're repetitive, we don't need to do it. I do want to move on to the uh, uh, Mark's report. There are, some, there are some comments, so if I'll just quickly go through them, and um, some are questions, so let me just keep on going, and, and unless you want to... No, I trust your filtering system, so please, yeah. go ahead. Um, so just, uh, uh, Kyoko, just, he, she uh, uh, echoes uh, David's statement about the garden, so little information is given. Um, the next one is from Cal... Rayside, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Um, how does how does the public benefit from this arrangement? A public sp space that is utilized by a very small number of people via a private preschool. So, so there's frustration there. Emily Rivard, is there any other park, city park with a green, with a garden slash green area that is owned by a school outside of school hours? Um, so that's, that is a question. Is there any other city park with a garden or green area that is owned by a school outside of school hours. I don't know if anybody can answer that here. Um, so wow. yeah, make it make it for it. It's not it's not owned by the school. It's owned by the Fox department. Yeah, that's been established. We do yes. Okay, okay, great. So we're gonna move on. Uh, Christos uh, Chios Akios uh, again completely agree with David's comments. It's disheartening to hear that Mr. Castro was more concerned about flowers than the community needs. Um, Courtney Nathanson, who takes care of the garden when the school is not in session? Um, as Stephanie is a parks employee, is she responsible to take care of it? I think we should answer that question. 
Uh, Stephanie told me she has Stephanie told me she has custodial help from the parks department uh, to help her with the garden um, at all times. And I okay. assume that's correct. Uh, Christos, uh, there's nothing public about this park. Um, Natasha M, how and when can we expect responses to the questions regarding public access to the garden at St. Barton as we are in prime park garden season? It would be a shame for the summer to be another uh, missed opportunity for our local community. Well, grateful for this opening, for opening the supervised school groups. It doesn't really address non-school and family fair access. Thank you. Um, Next one, Erica Wolf, Addition, additional St. Martin comments. Number one, update on schedule for bathroom rehabilitation. We'll get to that during uh, the- We'll get to that, yes, these are parks, it's concerned. Okay, this, we can do that with Wesley. Um, okay, Christos, again, I've witnessed this as well. I took pictures of people picking on April 8th. Courtney, uh, I'd, I'd like to speak. Courtney Nathanson would like to speak. Is there time to take the floor on that? Kevin, uh, go ahead. I already established earlier that I'm allowable, but I do. I don't want to just be. I, I don't want to be repetitive in the questions that we've yeah. already addressed. So if it's not repetitive, let's let's uh, give the floor. And then I, I do see us hopefully wrapping this within the next two and a half minutes. Go ahead, Jeannie. Yeah, no, Courtney, can you open up the mic for Courtney then? Hi there, this is Courtney Nathanson. Um, just to point out, I'm a PS116 parent on the executive board of the PTA and incoming co-president as of September. So as Erica Silverman steps down, I'll be coming on. So just to set that bar. Um, I agree with everything that David Saul and the Erica's have said tonight. Um, one question that I just wanted to push back on a little bit, you mentioned that the next meeting is not till September. And right. there's a lot of questions that are outstanding as far as getting access to this grounds that if Stephanie truly is a parks department employee who is her boss and how how does that just jive with Bloomberg's got her back none of that makes sense to me um and to push this off till September when this could be something that our communities and the kids supervised could be using over the summer I think is very important um and it's only May well June 1st so if we can potentially have some answers within the next few weeks I think that would be really helpful and mm -hmm. My second question is, has Stephanie been on any of these meetings? I've been joining these meetings for the better part of almost a year and we've never seen her. It's just that Bloomberg has her back and this is the way it's always been. So I wanna push back a little respectfully on that, but thank, yeah, you. thank, thank you. I can answer both of those, Courtney. Thank you, by the way, and, and uh, best of luck to you um, in your position going in at PS116. Hopefully um, we'll be, uh, in, the committee will be engaging with you. Stephanie, I did invite to the meeting. We actually, in that pleasant conversation on Earth Day, we exchanged information. Uh, she gave me her, her mobile number and her email. I did invite her to be at this meeting and actually the previous meeting as well. Um, I have not gotten um, a uh, green light for her to participate yet. So that request was made to her. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere. Um, and as far as, I'm sorry, your other question was, I apologize. So basically the timeline, waiting till September. Oh, yes, not just, even you know, the timeline, the timeline for the committee, that's just the way that the uh, community board is set up, that the summers uh, have off except for one committee that approves uh, business licenses. I am very much in support of holding a special meeting. I just need to see what the protocol would have to be for that. Um, I would be very happy to, to, to do that. Um, so let's, let's, let's yearn for that. Um, uh, to to have a special meeting if we need to, um, but I need to check with um, the powers that be um, at the district office. Um, but that was my one question, uh, Courtney, that I have uh, really for Steve, and maybe we can end on this if there's nothing else, is what when can we expect to hear back? Um, because this is something that's not going to go away, as I think um, the Parks Department certainly understands at this point. When do we expect to hear back? And then with that, Jeannie, if we can move on, unless you really feel we should speak, um, I'll give Steve or any or Wesley the floor. Yeah, I, I think most of these questions have been answered in some shape or form, the remaining or comments. Okay. So, um, unless Wonderful. Somebody... If we can just get, I don't know if there's an answer to that, if we can get some sense of timeline on when, I think uh, Steve had mentioned at the top that uh, there could be um, a decision that could change uh, uh, the course of that garden. And uh, if we can get a better 
uh, idea of when that might be, Steve. That would be wonderful. All right, well, uh, let me just begin by saying that um, um, uh, there's information I gathered tonight, which I did not have previously, which uh, I'm going to take back to uh, uh, Commissioner Castro. Um, there were points that were made here that, uh, um, and uh, incidents that were mentioned uh, that I was not aware of. Um, so uh, uh, I, I want him to be aware of this stuff as well. Um, I, I will have a conversation with the people in our recreation division. I want to get a handle on uh, on uh, the changes that are being made to the preschool, and I will uh, I will get back to uh, Kevin or Brendan. Uh, um, uh, hopefully, uh, well, I don't know within a week. I mean, you know, it shouldn't right. take shouldn't take that long to uh, to get back to you. Wonderful. And then uh, to to Courtney's concern, I would like to then relay that immediately to. Uh, interested parties. Um, Courtney, PS116 will certainly be one of those interested parties that we will inform. Indeed. Um, I just want to end this uh, quickly um, by giving you some history as I try to drop. This is not too long. I may have mentioned this before, but during World War II, the St. Martin Parks Garden was designated one of the city's so-called victory gardens, designated for the public good. Produce was grown there to diminish the urgency for public food supplies and to boost public morale. So it seems like that garden, the garden in St. Varden, I think the location was a bit different back then, but the garden at St. Varden may have taken a turn away from the public good. And, and I think it's just, hopefully, Steve, we're just trying to give you a sense that we're trying to uh, do a course correct on that history. Um, we will move on to item number seven, our last item, which is a report from the Department of Parks and Recreation uh, I believe Wesley Hamilton will handle this. Wes, you have the floor. Thanks, Kevin. Well, thanks everyone for tonight. It's uh, been a very interesting and a very good uh, community board meeting this evening. I'll try to be brief. I, good news is I don't have a lot of other updates. I think we got a lot of stuff out there, but I do have a few and I'd be happy to go over them and try to answer any questions. Um, for the most part, our permits are, are in usage in our parks is way up. Uh, higher, highest we've probably ever seen it based upon our permits and, uh, and also uh, volume of garbage collected. Uh, the good news is my seasonal staff is now finally coming in, starting to get them in uh, drips and drabs. And uh, we're in the process of training this staff and, uh, and uh, teaching them and making sure that they get the training they need to perform their jobs efficiently. Um, so bear with us with that, but uh, we know we're in a transition time and uh, the weather's warming up very quick, uh, but we are moving forward with that and we are getting help in that area. Uh, the big news is the pools are opening on uh, June 26th. Uh, all the pools in Manhattan, and with the exception of three, which I believe LASIK and Central Park, uh, Dapolito and one other park, I think, uh, it's not just maybe in the lower part of Manhattan. I forget the third one. May Steve may know, or I'll follow up with which one it is. But those those three pools are under construction. That's the only reason why they won't be opening. But the remainder of the pools will be opening this year uh, on June 26th, which that would include Astor Levy and Community Board Six, uh, Dry Dock just south of Community Board Six, uh, Ham Fish, and uh, John Jay to the north, as well as Tom Jeff. So all the pools will be opening up. And um, at this point in time, I don't have any information on uh, uh, if there'll be any uh, spacing issues or, or how many people will be allowed in the pools. That would probably be determined by the Department of uh, Health. Uh, but we'll update uh, the community and everyone. And once we get that information, whatever, um, whatever guidelines are set forth for COVID, we will obviously follow them, but um, they're usually set forth by the uh, department the the, or the mayor himself. Yeah, so with that, we'll move on to uh, capital projects, which we just spoke about two of them with Glick and Depp. Uh, both in the design phase. Uh, uh, great presentations from our committees there. Um, DAG is in procurement. Uh, hold on, Wesley. Wesley, I'm sorry to interrupt. If somebody can mute themselves, we're hearing a lot of background. Um, Conversation, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Again, whoever, if we need to mute somebody. Am I muted? Am I not muted? We hear you, David. I'm not supposed to. Okay. 
Okay, we need you to mute, David, if you could, and then um, Wesley, if you can continue. Go ahead. Sure, thank you. So DAG is in procurement, Honey Locust is in procurement, and Bellevue South is also in procurement. And then we heard from Glick and Detmold. Um, Mary O'Connor and Tudor are also in procurement. Uh, as some folks mentioned earlier, St. Barton's uh, synthetic turf project is, is completed and that is open. Uh, Robert Moses is in progress and it's nearing completion. Um, we expect that to be open probably within the next couple of weeks. And then moving on after Moses is opened, we will begin on uh, Peters Field. Uh, we will be waiting uh, until after school is completed there. We've already started ordering materials. So we expect that to begin sometime either uh, late June or beginning of July. Uh, we'll be starting at Peters Field. So uh, the progress is we've got a lot of great positive uh, notes for St. Vartans. We hope to get the same thing for Moses and, and, and Peters Field once we get that done as well. So that's pretty much our updates. And I'm sure there were some other questions. I know uh, Erica had asked about the St. Barton's comfort station. Um, and also the, tape, uh, the caution tape this afternoon in the, the half the St. Barton playground. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, the St. Barton turf is in my background right now. It's a beautiful <laughs> spread. Um, yes, the St. Barton playground closed space today with caution tape and then the comfort station were posed earlier. I'll have to look into what the issue was with the caution tape. I mean, typically my staff does that. Uh, if if uh, anything was broken, they may caution tape something off. And then other cases, sometimes when we actually repair stuff, we also have to caution it off. For example, if we had to do any kind of brick and mortar work or any type of caulking, we might want to put the, or painting, we may put caution tape off. But so I'm not aware of what was cautioned off today. I know we have had some uh, brick work being done near the spray fountain. Um, but I'll, I'll look into that and get back to the caution tape on the play equipment, but it was more likely in relationship to uh, either repair or a repair that is needed. So I'll follow up with that with my staff tomorrow. Um, the comfort station, we had a fire uh, in that area about uh, a couple of weeks ago um, in the women's comfort station predominantly in there. And so um, there were some damages done to that area and we have uh, shops had to try to um, is going to be making repairs to that. They will be making the repairs as soon as possible, but there are some materials that they have to order. And we're also kind of right in the middle of our budget season. So they will be repairing that as soon as possible. They may be ordering stuff, but uh, we hope to have that open as soon as possible. I, I don't have a time frame set, but I can tell you it's a high priority for our shops and we will be addressing the women's comfort station as soon as possible. Uh, we have the men's room open. Um, there's no issues in that comfort station. So we're trying to uh, offer what we can in that area. So um, it's the best information I can give you for St. Barton. So I have to follow up with the caution tape. Was there another question with St. Barton? Yeah, well, I have two more that were not posed earlier, but they came in from the public. And then uh, Jeannie, if you have them. But before I do, I'm sorry, Marty, I'm just noticing your hand raised. If it's been up for a while, I apologize. In regards to Murphy Brothers, I I attend most of our meetings here. I don't re recall us discussing that it should be turfed. Uh, Murphy, uh, uh, Robert Moses, Robert Moses had been an active park. Uh, it's where the uh, roller hockey uh, had gone. Do you know where where that was moved to? Or and and did we agree that it should be turfed? We didn't address it. This is committee. You're you're absolutely right. At least you know it it, it 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 uh, changes the nature of the park without our uh, input at all. I, well, I go back some time ago, but I do believe the the community board was notified of the parks that we were uh, looking to synthetic turf. Uh, I, I believe I attended some of them quite some time ago, probably before the pandemic, but. Uh, uh, the sites were notified. Uh, I could follow up with that and we could see when that was. But uh, Robert Moses was on the list. We haven't made any changes in that aspect. Uh, yeah, I really... made it a while back. Um, um, I don't remember, certainly as chair, I don't remember, but it could have been before that because the chair uh, I had started, I think, I... in September. It could have been before that. Mark was the uh, vice was... chair for the last couple of years and he was 
chair for the a few years before that. I've been on this committee since ninety two. 91. Uh, yeah. And I, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, I do. And, and Marty, to pick up your point, yeah. and I know that there, there has been the roller hockey there in line hockey. I think it's uh, more customarily, customarily referred, but I did walk by when I saw the turf going down on that Southern street and there was a discarded uh, hockey net there just on the sidewalk. Um, not a good, not good optics um, to see that literally discarded on the side of the street. Don't know if it was picked up afterwards. Um, but yes, you're right. There are some sensitive members of the community who were very sad to see that that inline hockey space go. We you're had a right. public member who uh, he was he was the president of of their group, and mm -hmm. he attended every meeting for years and years and years. I haven't haven't seen him for a couple of a uh, couple of meetings now. Uh, I, I wonder because of the turf, he just uh, was lo lost his. Uh, his interest. Yeah. Well, I do know that some parks, though, the one down, uh, what is it on um, 7th Street um, in Houston, um, the one there on the, uh, uh, the northeast corner, they used to have inline hockey. And then I know that there was a decision not to allow it anymore because of flying pucks. There were a lot of people concerned about injuries. I guess there were injuries. So I know that uh, the actor Tim Robbins was one of the advocates to try to keep it open. And he was on the losing end of that with his group and they ended up closing it to inline hockey. So I don't know if that was a consideration as well. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, the other, um, there are a couple of comments like I mentioned. Uh, oh, go ahead, do you wanna answer that, Wes? Why well, I, I guess, uh, I mean, as far as I know, the, as far as I know, the hockey people are still uh, uh, using what's called the Pasenate ball field on, uh, on Houston Street. In well, that's the one I'm talking about. That's uh, there. I was told that inline hockey is not allowed there anymore. No, that's no. not. That's not correct. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. Also, um, this is Brendan. At uh, certain hours. I wonder if it's certain hours, and maybe well, we can at certain hours because the turf. But go ahead. Yeah, uh, and I I know that the um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, the. Uh, uh, the plan to install the turf at the three locations in district in your district. Um, I'm, I'm sure it was mentioned that at at least one of the parks committee meetings. I can go back and uh, and look at my emails and notes. And, and but it also came up more than once at the I forget the name of the committee. Uh, uh, is it a waterfront committee or land yeah. use committee that's been considering the uh, east side coastal resiliency project? And the, these turf projects are in conjunction with. Uh, uh, helping to ameliorate the uh, the impact on on the current uh, permit holders at East River Park, so that it was uh, they were discussed in the in the context of the East Side Cultural Resiliency Project with that uh, I know with the Land Use Committee. Thank you, and um, I just don't remember. It doesn't mean that uh, you know it wasn't discussed even in the short in the uh, the uh, not so distant future. So I'll look into that as well. Thank you for that um, that it was brought up and addressed. Um, um. Kevin? Yes. Uh, just very quickly, I was just looking through the CD6 meeting minutes database, and it looks like in late 2019, um, at the October 28, 2019 meeting, um, joint meeting of the Parks Committee and the Land Use and Waterfront Committee, mm. um, there was a presentation on some of these um, asphalt to turf um, plans that the parks department have had at the time, which you know, included St. Martin Park. Uh, it, um, just a moment. And it included Robert Moses playground as well. So- uh, It was addressed, thank it, you. It, it was addressed. However, I should also note that according to the minutes from that meeting, um, just a moment. According to the minutes from that meeting on, you know, these alternative recreation sites during the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project, um, there was some express concern that the installation of synthetic turf for ball games um, would, you know, create some issues, including 
the fact that roller hockey would no longer be possible. So in summary, at least based on the information from this meeting, it sounds like there was a presentation on the installation of synthetic turf at multiple places, including Robert Moses, and that um, there was some concern expressed about it. That's important. So thank you. Thank you for that. That was... Uh, um... Well, the, the, fact, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, roller hockey has not really been played at Robert Moses for, uh, for a, uh, an extended period of time. And I think the concern, oh, go ahead, Mark. I see Mark's hand raised. Yeah, I know that I just thinking back, I think I actually missed the meeting if I ever go to this, but there was, um, you know, the backstop and the, uh, the nets were stolen at some point or lost the roller hockey guys, which is a problem. There was also a lot of um, back and forth in parks um, from parents about you know, taking their kids to ride their bikes. Um, and Moses, there was a lot of conversation about that. So um, it was discussed quite a bit. Yeah, and I'm going to thank you, Mark, and, and uh, we're going to wrap this uh, uh, meeting so, soon, but I will, I want to address the bike situation um, and how we can, because that is certainly um, a concern. A um, couple other things, uh, Wes, we, somebody, again, these are a couple of public comments, public comments. Uh, question is, can you close the gates because kids run after, this is St. Martin, can you close the gates because kids run after the ball? Can you put up, please close the gates sign or slow down sign for cars? It, can you put up a second level of fences to stop rolling or bouncing balls? Can you somehow put in automatically closing gates? There's a concern that kids are running, that the gates are open. Um, I mean, we can look into some of that. Um, we really can't do any uh, signage directly to the vehicles that would be DOT. Uh, that could be something that could be brought up in the public safety meeting as well for DOT signage, just for vehicles to slow down. Um, as far as the gates go, they're wrought iron gates. Um, we're not able to really create a automatically closing gate, uh, which can also, some of those can be problematic as well, but we can look into trying to maybe look into some kind of ways to help prevent balls or or uh, younger children from going through there. So we'll, we'll have to look into that. Um, I don't know if it would be automatic gates or if we'll have to look into doing like a double gate system. We can look into that and see what we can do. It does present some challenges though at the top of the stairs. So, and how do we open the gates without hitting the turf? Uh, but we'll look into that. It's definitely a concern and uh, safety is our one of our top priorities as well. So we'll look into that um, well, what, what, see what, what we can come up with. Wes, why don't we just at least put up signs and tell people uh, tell people to please close the gates? Uh, let's well, at least let's at least do that. We 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 I don't know. If, all right, we'll have to look into that with Steve. Uh, those are heavy uh, wrought iron gates. They're not like standard uh, chain link or or things. I mean, we could we could put the signs up, but I don't know if everybody can open those gates. Uh, we can see though. We can look into that. See what we can. We might have to do some modification on the gate in order to make that happen, Steve. That'd be great. Uh, Mark Thompson, do you have the floor? Yeah, um, I think Marty will remember, this is maybe when I was chair and Tony was still district manager. We we looked into a second set of gates inside that were lower just yep. to keep little kids from running out there because it was a bunch of moms were saying like some little kid ran out onto First Avenue. And it was that basic. And I thought that something was being done or it was looked into I mean, Wes, it was before you were, you were just a glimmer in our eye back then, but um, it was quite a while ago. And we talked about putting a second set a low fence inside just in part of the area to keep the kids from bolting um, and, you know, from the balls going out there and it having little things say, we, like a dog run. It might be something we should consider in our uh, budget recommendations. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, if it's feasible. I thought that Parks team, I think actually you guys looked at something and had something figured out. I just don't remember it was so long ago. Um, but there was a solution. Um, and it was like a, a second smaller fence and there was a gate, like a, a dog run kind of thing, but further back or something. I don't recall that, but I- Yeah, it was a long time ago, so. But uh, as part of the playground uh, project, I believe we're putting in uh, 
or putting in gates uh, at the playground uh, mm -hmm. at the playground entrance itself, uh, so uh, um, which uh, people had requested, so that kids wouldn't just run right out of the playground. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not I'm not familiar with anything with another set of gates for the ball field itself. Yeah, it was just so long ago. I just remember. Um, I'm glad we put that on the uh, radar again. Um, uh, you had mentioned pets. Um, that was my last comment. Someone, and I don't know if I fully understand this. They said with the, with the turf in the future, it's going to be problematic to have pets on the turf. I don't know why. Is the turf changing something? Um, so the question is, will pets be allowed on the turf it, in the future? down the road. I can answer that pets are not allowed on the synthetic turf or they're not allowed on their athletic fields. They weren't allowed on to the uh, area pre-existing uh, the turf. Okay. So um, we will be getting some new signage to that. The, the synthetic turf does have some very specific uh, rules such as no cleats and stuff of that nature. So we've ordered those signs uh, specific for the synthetic turf, but Dogs are not, uh, there's already some now state no dogs allowed. Gotcha. Maybe somebody saw one, maybe went on, went on there shortly um, that wasn't supposed to be there. That's my guess. Uh, that is <laughs> it. Um, what's that? I, that does happen occasionally. Yeah, I would imagine. It's kind of hard to p police every dog that comes out there. Um, okay, quickly, I want to give a uh, uh, quick chair's report. Um, we had mentioned the right, lion. Um, Kevin, yeah. I'm sorry. There, there's uh, Erica Wolf has her hand raised. And um, there, there's maybe one oh, more is this question. About, again, we've moved on from the garden. If this is about any other questions on the general parks report, that would be fine. Yeah, hi, um, hi, thank you. Um, I was just gonna say about the pets, I'm glad that was brought up because I haven't actually seen it, but a lot of people have been concerned about the peeing and pooping and whatever. So bigger signs is great. And Wes, I was just gonna say, I appreciate the um, offer to look at the gates and make them lighter, but I just also want you to know, just in case you are open to s telling people to do it now, you know, at Albano, it's also a very heavy, heavy wrought iron gate that people used to open and close every single time they came in and out. I don't know why we don't do that anymore, but just so you know, it is something the public has dealt with before just a few blocks down. So maybe even as a temporary solution, that would be okay. Um, and then um, that's it. The other Kevin, um, two things, Kevin, actually, you mentioned and kind of, kind of glazed over it, but, and Steve just brought up the renovation of the playground. So I just want to put on the record, I am concerned that the comfort station and garden got left out of that renovation just because of the whole private preschool situation that I know we already discussed. So I just want to put that out there. And then Wes, do you know when we will get the permit schedule for the turf at St. Martin Park? And I heard a rumor you might be leaning more towards youth leagues. Is that true? That's it. Thank you, Kevin. Sure. Um, the permit questions, that's, that's uh, I, I'm not really leaning towards any of them. I do know that uh, we will be receiving a lot of permits that are coming from uh, fields that are being displaced. Um, Steve, if you're still on the line now, you had mentioned that, that we weren't going to be taking any permits for some time, and I forget the date. Well, um, we, we, we expect to, uh, that there will be very few permits issued uh, during the summer, up until uh, um, the end of August, uh, because the uh, uh, the uh, leagues will still be able to use the fields in East River Park, so there'll be very uh, a limited need uh, to uh, uh, relocate anybody to uh, Saint Varden. So Saint Saint Varden will um, at Saint Varden there'll be very few permits uh, uh, during this coming summer, uh, and the uh, uh, the priority has always been uh, for youth leagues. That has always been the case. Um, uh, and then that, uh, one, once the uh, permits are issued, uh, uh, that, that would be um, that would be the policy that we follow. Great, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, chair's report, uh, and I realize it's getting late. Um, Alliance for Kips Bay, which was mentioned earlier, uh, they are one of the parties, including the elected officials, uh, were, were very much involved in this too of getting compost facilities with the uh, Lower East Side Ecology Center at St. Fartin's on Saturdays. They have requested, they do need monitors to keep those compost, compost bins, uh, you know, continuing to serve the public. So please spread the word if you know anybody that can do that. You can certainly get in touch with me. Um, if you do know Molly Hollister or Sandy McKee, there are two other people you can get in touch with. Um, good news also um, of that same area. 
Well, it's good news, bad news. Um, NYPD has indicated that the street just north of St. Martin can be approved as an open street if we check one box, and that is we need barricade stewards. It's the bad news that we can't guarantee we can find barricade stewards. I, one of the ideas I have is, you know, who does community service work as part of their um, court appointed uh, punishment and maybe they can go out there and look at those. But that's good if we can somehow uh, come up with some ideas on finding uh, stewards. That would be the type of space, Mark, that we can, kids can learn to ride bikes and ride bikes up and down that stretch. We can talk to Copper Towers, the uh, Twisted Apartments. About the, the church. And the church. And the church yeah. for the school. Yeah, the residents, yeah. Can we keep this, uh, how do we keep this um, active, this discussion on finding uh, uh, people to, to keep stewards? The chair of the committee will send emails to people. <laughs> I will, okay. It's like the basketball nets. I just bug people enough. And I know, thank you, which I love. It worked. Yeah, good. Finally works. Uh, not finally, it always works. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, listening to that very quick chair's report. Um, old new business before Kevin, we open Kevin, up. Ms. Kevin, uh, I'm sorry. I, I've been ready, I'm sorry. We didn't, oh, sorry. We, didn't finish, we didn't finish Wes's Wes's report because I still have more Wes, questions. I thought you were done and I apologize. He's, still, he's done, but we have questions from the public that still need oh, to be okay. answered. Just a few more. Sorry. I just wanted to get them in. No, um, hey, that's what you're there for is to one of the many reasons you're there is to bug <laughs> me about questions. Okay. All right. Sorry. Just uh, uh, this is from Cheryl Arlock. A um, couple of questions about pickleball. Um, uh, let's see, Robert Moses, where we play pickleball, we had we had more than six courts there. I see in the minutes just presented that Petersfield will have partial turf for basketball. Is there any way that pickleball court markings could be included, and we could bring our own nets? I know on the indoor fields we share with bas basketball courts. That's from Cheryl. Um. For Peter's Field, that might be possible. I mean, we don't usually do markings, but I do know with Peter's Field, the layout of the, I haven't actually seen the designs for the layout, but there is a basketball court. Uh, there's basketball goals at the back end or the, or the Western side of Peter's Field rather. So, you know, if nobody's playing basketball, if there's more pickleball, it's usually first come first serve. Uh, it may be possible in the area is currently uh, allowed to do tennis at, on a first come first serve. When in. Um, so that may be something we can look into and, and that might be a possibility for Peter's field. Yeah. Wes, let's discuss that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that again, there's a, there's a, a lot of public comments about making those basketball hoops at Peter's Field, the type that you can hang nets on and not just the circular uh, iron bar that you can't do that to. So that would be something that I know we could bring up in budget conversations, but it's always worth mentioning. Um, more, I have more. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Marty, you have your hand raised. Do you want to comment, say Mark, something? New, new business. <laughs> I, it's on new business, not 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 on oh, okay. Wesley's report. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, uh, let me see. Andrea, is there a place where we can see who has permits for the turf area? And um, second, second from Andrea is any if anyone is interested in helping with composting, they can email compost compostvartin at gmail dot com. I'll put that in the Q and A. Great. So everybody Great. can see that. But the, the other question is, can we see, is there any way we can see who has permits? That's the question. Yeah, I, I believe you can uh, go to the park's website. Um, I, I, don't have the, uh, I don't have the link with me, but I can send it to the board office and uh, maybe they can, they can disseminate it. Uh, but I believe the information is available. Okay. Thanks. Anything else, Jeannie? Yes, one more, uh, one more. Uh, William Odo Otto, as a former transportation chair, I would like to comment just to go back on the Third Avenue road alignment. Um, and you got earlier, he said, I just got home and would like to comment on the cogent plan for Stytown. Is there time for William to speak on older, on earlier business? 
Uh, yes, we can open up. We, we're done with uh, my chair's report with the mention of the open street possibility. So yes, let's move on to all the new business. Uh, go ahead. We can start with Marty or Jeannie. Oh okay. uh, uh, yeah. Uh, last, last week, Stuyvesant Cove Park Association met with the construction managers on the East Side Coastal Resilience, and we are resuming our free summer concert ser series. Rather than being at uh, at Solar One because Solar Solar One is a, is well within the construction area, we are going to. Uh, have the concerts at 20th Street. Uh, there will be about nine concerts starting in a couple of weeks. The exact um, uh, series uh, dates will be released you know, uh, within a week or two. And it's free for everybody. That's terrific. In the space right when where you're stopped before you would have gotten to Solar One, that area there? No, what, when, when you come into the park at 20th Street, mm -hmm. uh, you, you would make a quick left mm -hmm. and that's where the chairs are going to be. And oh, underneath the, FD, or after, underneath the, the overhang. Well, right, well, as you go into the park, you make a left and-, and, and Oh, I know, right, right, where the greens, yeah. the, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, will be uh, solar one will be putting out the chairs that will be bringing a couple of generators for sound for uh, where the, the actual space that we have for the entertainers is, is uh, more like for three to seven entertainers rather than the um, New York City um, police jazz band where we had 22 musicians and five singers. Uh, they won't fit, though we, we are going to ask them if they have a small combo that, that uh, would accommodate the space. But uh, it, it's, all go, it's all a go. Right. When will the dates be and how will people find out about the dates? We uh, published the... the, the, the uh, <clears throat> Joanne Polizzi is currently scheduling the dates. Uh, we do publish in uh, the town uh, newspaper town and village and i'll send the uh the uh schedule to the board that the board could uh post it or send it great great thank you thank you um i is, any other uh genie go ahead sorry i thought i'm sorry if you misunderstood me but what i was saying earlier is um that william uh, oddo was asking for the floor he came to the meeting late and he wanted to make a few comments about our earlier discussion about the, the, the plant um, and uh, uh, the Third Avenue road alignment. So he wanted to know if we could have a minute to speak about that. Uh, yes, we'll allow it, as they say. Okay, thank you. Oops. Go ahead, William. Okay, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, oh, William. Great. Hi. Yeah, so. Um, Good to be here. I was actually at a uh, and we have a, a golf club group that we meet and we teach young people golf. So I, I just got home from that this evening. Uh, yeah, so two items uh, quickly on the uh, Third Avenue uh, redesign. I, the uh, sketch that was printed uh, on the drawing, I couldn't really see some of the dimensions, but I did see a 10 foot travel lane. Okay, and, this would, um, William, if I could, Yeah. this is uh, part of the transportation committee. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, okay, uh, okay. We, we, are, we are not addressing this, but the transportation okay, okay. committee certainly is. Okay, I'll bring that up. If you can do that, um, sure, I mean, we sure. appreciate Appreciate the uh, the time, but that is something that uh, if you no need problem. any sort of reaction on, definitely check out the next meeting for transportation. Great, yeah, no problem. So yeah, on the um, on the power plant, um, you know, initially the discussion around the power plant it was listed as a fossil fuel plant, and I guess it was kind of misleading because basically every power plant is a fossil fuel plant unless it's 
uh, renewable energy. Um, but Stuyvesant Town, and this, uh, Stuyvesant Town has actually the largest solar array. Yes, in, that's in correct. York. In fact, um, we, William, said, we, have, we, have dis this, we have discussed at length earlier in the, I'm sorry if you weren't part of that, we did address that um, Stuytown website does have very uh, deep information about its work about sustainability, including the solar panels and the largest, um, I know it has some superlatives as far as how big they are compared to the rest of the world's uh, community. So yes, all that information should be on the uh, style. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I'm aware I, of all that. In fact, I. So we're going to move on from any yeah. discussions about the power plants because we already had that full discussion opportunity right. earlier. Yeah, all right. Anything just, else? Any other topics? Sure. Yeah, on on the power plant, and I think that will that's kind of part. And we're going to move on from the power plant. So, oh, can, um, I, can I mention talk a little? No, bit no. We already bit. had that discussion, so we're going to wrap um, that. Unless anybody else has public comments. Um, yeah, is there a public mention, comment that I could if, make if about that? Use, no, I'm sorry. Know. If there's no, if there's any questions about the power plant, mm -hmm. we will not be discussing those. Oh, when will they be discussed? Do you know? Uh, we'll we'll probably there's a chance we'll discuss them again at our September meeting. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you for um, it's important for your voice to be heard. Um, so the only all the new business I have I have two things quickly. We are tabling our ongoing budget discussion until that next meeting in September because this meeting has run long. One item though that we recommended to be transferred to the transportation committee has been resolved. Now for many years, there has been a request to fix the lights at Tudor City's 42nd Street entrances. DOT has come through as it has had one of his contractors now fix those lights. Just saw the pictures tonight, Brendan. Thank you for sending them over. Um, also, uh, you might have seen this in the June newsletter from CB6, the Corinthian between 37th and 38th Street, which we have been addressing in this committee for a long while. All of the sidewalk sheds in Scalvatine, including on the side streets, is all down. That's now a very clear space, and we're happy to see that happen. Um, and that's actually it. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, uh, Kevin, could I just... Uh, yes, of course, Steve, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, let me just clarify that uh, the work that DOT did to, uh, um, to uh, repair uh, and to install new LED lights was on the ramp on the upper level in Tudor City uh, that leads uh, uh, like from our playgrounds up towards the uh, overpass and goes over 42nd Street. Uh, the lights down below at the entrance uh, uh, to the staircases, um, uh, we, we've been taking care of those in uh, the last few years. Um, oh, Brent, Brendan, sorry, can you jump in? Which The pictures that you sent, which one were those two? Uh, those um, those, those were, those go ahead, Steve, sorry. Level. Are, th are those are those photos you got from uh, David Reap? Yes. Yeah, those are the ones on the uh, ramp on that upper level. Well, when you uh, go up the staircase uh, from 42nd Street. Yes. And just to clarify, the budget request was to have the lights repaired at the ramps, plural, because there's a ramp on the oh, north right. side yes. of 42nd Street and a ramp on the south side of 42nd Street. Well, you can now and take it off your list. Yep. That's wonderful. Uh, and then the other thing, Kevin, I just want to mention is that uh, Eric Linsalata, who was on the call earlier, helping with the uh, presentation on uh, on uh, what we pulled up to today, uh, Glick Park, um, says, um, uh, thanks for your time and comments. As mentioned, we would definitely appreciate a letter of support uh, for our project when you can. Um, so I uh, would appreciate it if you keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. Yes, we just, um, we did a resolution on Peter Detmold. We did not uh, have um, a committee member volunteer one for that. That is correct. Um, certainly um, there still might be time to do so, but I will, I think you had said the time obviously is not as, as uh, drastic as it is with Peter Detmold. If we need to, we can potentially circle back on um, on that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's always good to know as we uh, uh, proceed on, along, the, uh, along on these projects that we have uh, the community board support. So, but um, I mean- I will, um, 
I will uh, see if there is um, any committee member who would like to uh, act on said um, request. And if there's not, it doesn't mean that it will not be readdressed. Um, I can promise that. Um, you can, oh, if, Mark, 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 yeah. go ahead. Well, I'm, I will only do this again if Raj Nair does a very thorough note passage to me with the illustrations in this case, colored illustrations, then I'll do it. Raj? Yeah, I, I'll also add my own commentary. So. Oh, I can bet. Okay. commentary. All right. Now, we had a concern about um, uh, a water level. Is Should that be part of the of your resolution? I know that, or is that just, like you said, something we're going to have to deal down with down the road on on that uh steve well it sounds like it's not something that's uh, really uh, practical to uh, to address it's um uh because it would require uh you know raising the level of the park and then raising and then going beyond the park uh, inland i mean it's uh it just seems to be beyond uh, uh practicality at, at that particular location and um and the concern is that if it's not done even in the short term, then uh, before that water level was to rise, then there could be some deterioration that's irreversible. Is that? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. Uh, but, okay. uh, and the, uh, and the uh, presentation they made uh, indicated that, um, that the work they're doing was gonna have a, uh, a useful lifespan of uh, maybe 50 years. Okay, that was my only thought. If that, if we feel that uh, that should be factored in at all, if not, uh, sorry, um, Mark, you can continue. Uh, I guess that was a uh, a motion for a resolution. Uh, yeah. Do I have a second? Seconded. Thank you, Raj. Seconded. Um, Brendan, can you call a vote and then announce the result? Okay. So. When I say your name, please say whether you are in favor, opposed, abstain, or abstain for cause. Marty Barrett. In favor. Jeanine D'Onofrio. Can you say that again? Did I in hear? In favor. Okay. Uh, Paige Judge. Paige? We'll circle back to Paige. Anton Malner? In, in favor. Uh, okay, Raj Nayar? In favor. Kevin O'Keefe? In favor. Uh, let me see, Reshma Patel? Reshma? We'll circle back to Reshma. Uh, Mark Thompson? Uh, in favor. Uh, Paige Judge? Uh, it's Matt Bondi, Brandon. I'm in favor, too. Oh, I've okay. <laughs> hey, Matt. Hey, guys. Welcome. I've been here for a little bit. I've been listening. Good meeting. Okay. Uh, Paige? Paige Judge? Uh, let me try Reishman one more time. Reishma Patel. Reishma? Okay. So with seven in favor, nobody opposed, nobody abstaining, and nobody abstaining for cause, the resolution passes. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome, and don't don't call it. Um, you know what? Call it uh, Plaza. Uh, e sorry, is it the East River Restaurant? There you go. Yeah, but yeah, put put that in your resolution. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome, Steve Simon. Um, thank you for you know this has been a long meeting. Thank you for uh, and did everyone with Parks for for hanging in there for a long time. But I thought uh, it was important. Yeah, uh, very good. I'm glad I was able to uh, to join you and uh, and then learn some stuff. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. We look forward to hearing you back too about the garden. Uh, that uh, you know, we'll, the antennas up. I know with a lot of members of the community um, on that, especially. Um, 
if there are any, if there are no more hanging chads, as it were, Jeannie, with questions that we haven't touched. I think that's it, Kevin. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No. So moved. All right. Thank you. Uh, we don't need a second. So. Um, Wait a minute. Uh, hold up. P Paige oh. has our hand raised. I did just want to say I had trouble. I wanted to vote in favor of the last resolution. Okay, I will mark your vote in favor. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, seeing no further business, the meeting is adjourned at uh, 10 26 p.m. Thank you all for hanging in there for a long meeting. Brendan will end the live stream.